Hello everyone, and welcome back to Dragon Riders, A Song of the Damned. My name is PB, I am your dungeon master for this session. I am joined, as always, by my wonderful, illustrious friends, some of uh, the best people I know in the world. We have Callum playing Aegis. Callum is a wonderful guy, very, very tall, very, very funny, sends me lots of good memes, sometimes sends me good like D, D ideas on instagram and he always appreciates my juicy daisy videos when i remember to send them boss Sums next me up perfectly. we have tommy who plays Arlai. um Arlia or Arlai? Arlai. You, you nailed him no Arlia. damn it i'm gaslighted for getting <laughs> my name. he trusts me he trusts me so completely that i can just tell him that his character name is pronounced differently and he <laughs> believes me um <laughs> He has been one of my closest friends now for God knows how long, like 12 years, 13 years, something like that. I feel like it's 13, 14 years at this point, yeah. Um, he has been one of my victims for a long time when it comes to dungeon mastering, and he's a wonderful person. Are you and saying all these nice things because I told you it makes me uncomfortable when yes, people I say am. nice things? <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you said that, I was like, well, I know what I'm doing during my intro. <laughs> Either that or you're announcing that you're dying or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, we have Alex, who is actually playing the Ruined, but it still says Veluin. Don't worry about it, it's going to be fixed on the VOD. Um, <laughs> and Alex, he is also a wonderful friend. He is insane at video games. Like, if I'm ever playing a multiplayer game against him, I hate my life. And when I'm playing multiplayer <laughs> games with him, I usually am slightly more okay with my life. Um, he is, uh, as I say, a, a wonderful person, very, very funny, and he has gone to two whole gigs with me where he didn't know anything about the band we were seeing, which I also appreciate. <laughs> and and I only threw up at one of them. Oh, yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's and finally, we have Samo. Samo is the newest friend in our little cluster, but just as wonderful as all the others. He is, I, I don't, sure. don't want to like hate on any of the other players, but he is quite possibly one of the most passionate players in terms of he seems to think about Dungeons and Dragons non-stop, um, all day, every day. His tragic love story with Shadowheart is something that I will keep with me for the rest of my life. Um, and uh, I also appreciate that we can share some German things occasionally. And uh, yeah, and this is this is Dragon Riders. <laughs> that was a cursed hey. intro if I've ever done one. <laughs> oh, and yeah, they are my little subbies. Uh, there yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it was always going to be there. Um, well, I gotta say, I do feel quite a bit better now that I've got some smoke up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, Neo No says that these are player obituaries. <laughs> well, might be accurate, so you know. Yeah. We. Join our adventurers still in the Lelion Mountains. They are escaped slaves on the run from the powerful Azamori Empire. And last session, one of them was on death's door when one late night at camp, strange things started to happen. The other party members were all, one way or another, pulled away from the camp and then... Berlin simply disappeared. Then they met a stranger, a blind man, who seems to be from another time entirely, a time where the tieflings are all but gone. He seems powerful, to say the least, and he manages to guide them to where Veluin is, in the lair of a hag. Veluin had something done to him by this hag that transformed him into a hexblood, something half hag, half not. Now he has newfound powers and a newfound vitality, but he is no longer value. He is the ruined, despite what it says on the stream. <laughs> and they returned back to camp that night. That's about the size of it. Cool. Yeah. Did anyone want 
to do anything before they took the long rest at the camp? Nah. Okay. Um. Well, that night, though, at least one of you does do something. Which is... Um, you... Aegis, when you rest up, you look over the item you occur, uh, occurred, what? Procured at the hag's lair. This happened off stream, so if you're thinking that you missed something, you didn't miss something. But, uh, Aegis, you have found a sickle. This sickle seems to be made of tempered steel and bits of antler soon together to make a odd looking sickle to say the least and you feel some degree of magical power coming from it this is the herbalist sickle it's the magical item that Callum got for his birthday um, and uh, it basically helps him with harvesting stuff and it can be used as a weapon we did go for that one in the end then why wouldn't I it's a cool ass weapon I mean, I don't know. There was some other cool stuff that you pointed out as well. And uh, I don't know if we actually mentioned last session, but uh, Alex does also have a magical item for his birthday, which is that he's got a rapier plus one. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. So, you all bed up for the night. Uh, there is enough room in the big tent for Dai to also sleep in the big tent. So that's what he's going to do. Assuming you don't kick him out of camp. <laughs> um, and yeah, you will uh, make a rest. So, I'll uh, sleep in the big tent to die. Okay, I, I, I guess that with you, Samo. No, 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 no. Don't get squashed. That's what happening. This, 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 this is a fucking two man tent, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're a three-man person. <laughs> <laughs> what time do you want to wake up? Uh, seven. You got back around midnight, so seven would be just shy of a long rest, but eight is a long rest. I mean, eight. Oh, we'll go eight, eight then. Eight cool. one. Just as a reminder of how to do long rest on your character sheet, you go to your character sheet, and uh, up the top, near your hit die, you just press L rest, then ask you whether it's a new day. You say yes. This new day? And uh, you can all either remove a ration pack from your inventory, or I believe, Arla, you had enough for everyone to have uh, rations. Yeah, I'll, f I'll feed everyone tonight. Because um, this isn't even your main rations, this is just the deer that you got uh, last night. So that is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So six off of your eight rations are in the consumables then, Tommy. Okay, apologies. How do you do the rest? Sorry. Uh, so go into your character sheets, and then in, under attributes, up at the top, you've got your hit die, and then L rest. I actually think you can do it on uh, yeah. tabs. But... <clears throat> yeah. And that will just auto-refill anything that's uh, once per long rest, or once per short rest. Cool. I think I actually need to... Limit. Might not need to, but yeah. Oh, wait. No, I think I do. Yeah, we don't really utilize this stuff very often, but yeah, I can control lighting on the fly. Yeah, that's very nice, especially for my character. That's very good. Cool. <clears throat> so you all gather up the next day. Anything that people want to do that morning, or are you kind of all ready to, to hit the road? Um, ready to hit the road personally. Yeah. I'll, I'll be one sec. Uh, I'm just going to check if my dinner's ready. Okay. No, okay, we've got those then... dragons and stuff. Probably don't want to linger too long. Well, I, I would like to speak to Aegis. Okay. <laughs> Can I do something before that? Yes. Sure. Just because with with the with the elf boy powers, we only need four hours, right? Mm hmm So for them for them four hours that I'm waiting for everyone else to get up. Can I go out and look for herbs? Is this a new day? Um I'm gonna say the gathering you can only do it once per day, so you can either do it now or you can do it at the end of the day. Right. Um, Not really any downside to doing it now, but it's just, yeah. I mean, I don't know where we're going to end up, so I might as well do it now, because I know that there is some around here. Okay. 
Uh, I am just going to roll. I think it's only fair that if someone is leaving the camp on their own, there is the chance of something going wrong. I can uh, come with panic. that. He hasn't asked you to. Um, so... Uh, <laughs> I mean, panic. I would be awake after four hours as well. Though. So I would notice if he were to leave. You are in the bigger tent, so would you be up and about, or would you just be kind of lounging about after four hours of rest? I don't think I would just sit in there with, like, two other people sleeping. I think I would be outside somewhere. Okay. Then you see Aegis leaving. Um, you can offer to go with him, um, or obviously you can offer to stay behind and guard the camp, because you are awake. <gasps> Cat! In is ready. Gato, 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 gato. I'd offer. I'd offer to, to go on. Okay, let's roleplay the salmon. He's clearly at I mean, the point actually, where he wait, doesn't attack he, you for stroking him as well. I mean, if, nice. he's, if he's fully aware that I am there and I could join join him and he's not asking me, then, then I wouldn't ask him to do it. Now that I think about it. Okay, then Aegis, you see him. Do you want to... Uh... Go smelly. <laughs> cool. So, the, the, the risk of this happening is pretty low. So I'm going to roll a d20. If it lands on a natural one, I'm going to roll on an encounter chart. Well, I am a gambling man, Pete. So natural free, you're fine. Hey. Ooh. Cool. Okay, so you want to go gathering, so roll me a nature roll, then we read on. Yes. Okay, with an 11, you're going to get a single roll on the mountains thing. 11's not great, so... Uh, just as a reminder as well, I'm not saying that you should use it on this roll necessarily, but just as a reminder to anyone who has inspiration about inspiration as well. If you ever want to use it, just pipe up. It would be nice to use the sickle, but I can't, because I need herbs. Okay. But it's fine. Okay. You find... Two Sauros. Two sour grass. And you already have one, so you've now got three sour grass in total. Hell yeah. Cool. I'm going to say that basically takes up your four hours of extra time, yeah. though. Uh, and then Zyla, Zila, sorry, um, you are... Um, I'm guarding. Just guarding. Cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, when the morning comes, um, it was the ruin to want to speak to Aegis, so... Yeah. Hop out of bed, crawling along the floor like a little goblin. <laughs> <laughs> like the ring girl coming out on the floor. Aegis. I'm sorry, I can't remember the. The name you've given yourself. Ah, it's, uh, The Ruined. Right, yes. Um, how can I help? Well, I just wanted to thank you for all of the care you gave me. That's, that's what I do. I am very appreciative. Uh, I happen to pick some things up that I think may be of use to you. Oh. Uh, I will present him the um, Acid Dew, Dream Lily, and Lightning Moss. Cool. That's all, that's all. Push my glasses up and take a little inspection of it. Uh, oh wait, what are these white ghost orchards to you? I'll give him the white ghost uh, orchard seeds and marusa twigs as well. I don't actually know what they are. Does the trailing system still work? I kind of know how you do it. Uh, what, of just like trying stuff out? And trading. Oh, it's trading. Like handing uh, it over. It doesn't know. Um, wow. So I will just manually move stuff. So what were you giving, sorry? Uh, pretty much all of the like ingredients that I have. Cool. These are, um. It's a pretty high quality. 
I thought so myself. Hopefully you can make some good use out of them. Kitty! God damn. Oh, Did Sam really just notice the cat? No, but of course the cat. I'm so pretty. I might be able to. I'm... While I know what I'm doing with potions and stuff, I'm still quite rotten. Like a novice to well, you've done well so far. I'm quite interested in your work, actually. Well, we'll see, I guess. But, um, back in the, uh, oh, let me, how would I, how would I describe it back when we were slaves? <laughs> <laughs> Not really any more way to describe yeah. it. I was going back with the encampment, but yeah, sure. Yeah. I, I you know, tried my best, but uh, ingredients were hard to come by. So. Well, now that we're out and about, I'm sure you'll be able to find some more. Yeah, I guess so. Are you also interested in uh, alcohol? Yes, well, I, I'm quite interested in a lot of things, really. Um, I kind of had to make do with what I had when I was younger. So I picked up a few tricks here and there. Right. So sort of self-taught? Or... Yes. Not very good at the moment, but as I said, just learn some things to get by, but I would like to improve upon my skills. Oh, there's no shame in it. Everyone learns. Especially with uh, these types of little treats. And I'll uh, I'll just pull out the uh, like acid from my pocket and give it another shake. Right. Yes. What you can do with those types of things. I suppose it all comes down to your imagination. Hmm. I have quite a vivid one. That I don't doubt. Well, perhaps in the future we could work together on some projects. So, I suppose we will. Um, I do apologize, but my mind is kind of preoccupied with getting out of there. Ah, no worries. I shall leave you be. Thank you. Bye bye. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okie doke. Anyone want to do anything else before packing up camp? Okay, then as you all start to pack up camp, uh, Dai will uh, kind of ask the group. So, with everything that happened last night, never got round to talking about why you're here in such a frigid place. It's about two degrees, by the way, Celsius, and uh, not snowing or raining, thankfully, but still there is a chill air the valley. Hmm. Uh, anyway. Anyone want to volunteer an answer <laughs> to his question? <laughs> well, I mean... Wait, so, how long after the uprising is this? About two weeks. Okay. Well... It's definitely not a boring tale. <clears throat> I've got a fucking burger in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright. You, you, can, you can finish off the, the deer meat that you're eating. Oh, yeah. Wait. Yes. <laughs> you see, everyone here was once a slave. But we are slaves no more. I see. I assume 
not due to a change in law. You would be correct. Then I have fallen in with fugitives, eh? Indeed you have. Any experience with such things? More than I'd like. Huh. Very well. I see no reason to separate ways for the time being. After all, I'm a stranger in a strange land, and I do believe I could be of some assistance to your group. We appreciate it. Especially if you can find me a cure. Quite. To do that, we'll need a library. I'm sure we'll come across one. So, what's the plan? Where are you all headed? Do you need a reminder on the plan? <laughs> Anywhere but here. What you had been sent to do initially was uh, the kind of group of leaders amongst the escaped slaves had, um, had agreed that uh, your party would be sent out to try and scout south. So let's let's hop over to the world map real quick. Um, boom, this one. Um, so the mines that you were working in were in this sort of area over here. Mm-hmm. And uh, you have fled south. Um, so you have headed past this kind of lake up here and into the Lelion Mountains. The idea was to try and get into the nearest kingdom, which is a very small fledgling kingdom of Elysia. So it's not a full-blown um, kind of mighty power in the world at this point. It is kind of the the city that some of you who've played Songs of Sacred and Songs of the Ancients would one day know um, is at this point a town and kind of like a um, you know a town that's recently been established sort of thing and there's a couple of villages but nonetheless it is independent land it is not owned by the Kingdom of Arsenal so you were sent to both scout south and obviously try and find the ruined a doctor the ruins no longer needs a doctor so there is, of course, the option to turn around and go back to the the rest of the escaped slaves and just try and travel together. Because part of the reason why they sent you was because it was like, we should scout ahead and also this person will die if he doesn't get medical attention. But at the same time, you haven't found a way through the mountains yet. So it's also fairly reasonable to keep on traveling south and try and find a way through. I guess since that's what we were supposed to do, we just continue with that? Okay. Yeah. So, we're going to start using um, a uh, a rulebook that I talked about during our session zero, um, but is new to the to the stream. So I will just announce what it is. We are going to be using a rulebook called Uncharted Journeys by Cubicle Seven Games to expand on traveling between areas. So there's a couple of things. First of all, in your journal uh, uh, section. You should see a uh, journal thing for uh, mechanics, rules, etc. Um, and in there, I've just realized that you guys don't have access to one of the other things. So I've just made you observers of death and resurrection, just in case you need a reminder on that. And you should also see Uncharted Journeys player version. I do not. I don't see the second one you just said. I only see the death and resurrection. Did I not? Make... Yeah. Oh, I did not make you guys observers of that. I just set it up today. Cool. You should now see it. Now I, I now see <laughs> cool. it. So this is just a, a trimmed down version of the player rules for Uncharted Journeys, but I'm going to explain it as well. It's just in, in case you ever need to refer back to it. So the first thing that you need to do is all decide who fits which role in your party. Now, your NPCs can be one of these roles as well, but you don't know your NPC stats. So they might be a good choice for a role or they might be a bad choice for a role. Here are the four roles. 
there is the leader. The leader is a is supposed to be a confident and wise party member who is capable of organizing and encouraging the team to persevere through challenges they otherwise could not surmount. Then you have the outrider. The outrider scouts ahead of the group. They are responsible for finding safe routes and tracking threats to the party. You have the quartermaster, who is responsible for maintaining and finding food and supplies for the party. They ensure the group is well equipped and that supplies are readily available after a hard day's journey. And the sentry, who is the eyes and ears of the party. They keep watch over the group and their surroundings and they are often the first to spot danger. So mechanically how this is all works is that you all, uh, during different random scenarios that might occur, it might call on a particular role to be the one who kind of leads in that scenario. But also, um, you all have like different advantages and disadvantages. So if you scroll down on this first page, it just ex expands on some of the things that you can do. So the leader, as an example, can uh, inspire his allies and lift their spirits, driving them forward to push their limits. So as a reaction while on a journey, you can allow another party member to reroll a failed saving throw or ability check. You can do this once per party member per journey. The outrider, um, uh, once per journey when the GM rolls 1d12 to determine the encounter type, you can also roll. The GM tells you the type of the encounter you both rolled, but not the specifics. So different types of ones will be things like, oh, you meet a stranger, or you find a safe place to rest. The specifics of what that is, you're not going to find out until you're in the actual scenario, but just the genre, so to speak, you will find out. And so I would then tell you what I rolled, and you will obviously t uh, tell me your number, and I'll tell you what you rolled, and then you get to decide which of those two you do. Uh, but then I still determine the actual encounter itself. Um, and then the quartermaster. So um, the quartermaster, um, at the start of the journey, you gain a number of supply dice equal to your proficiency bonus. Um, at any time throughout the journey as a reaction to an ally making an ability check, you can spend a supply die to improve the ally's check, adding 1d6 for that supply die. Um, That's interesting. And then the sentry. So um, at the start of the journey, you gain a number of focus die equal to your proficiency bonus. At any time throughout the journey as a reaction to an ally making a saving throw, you can spend focus die to improve the ally's check, adding 1d6 to the result. So, uh, basically, Quartermaster and Sentry similar, but um, the Quartermaster is to an ability check, the Sentry is to a saving throw. And initiative. And to initiative, yeah. So, that's the general gist of it. Now, if you want some inspiration, I can also tell you it's on the second chapter of this little journal entry, but different classes kind of lend towards different things. So, I can also whiz through which ones your classes might be best suited to. Do you want me to do that? Bloodhunter's sure. not covered, I'm afraid. So I think Bloodhunter's yeah, probably closest so. to Ranger in terms of mechanics, but um I hate but, yeah. to say it, but neither is Artificer. <clears throat> yeah. Artifice Artifice is probably closest like a wizard, I'd guess. Yeah, but either way, looking at it, I really kinda like the quartermaster. Yeah, that's fair. I mean obviously well, the... mainly because a lot of the checks use tools, and I'm very good with tools. So I'll, I'll whiz through the other two then. So Barbarians, they recommend uh, Outriders or Quartermasters. Um, and Fighters, they recommend uh, Quartermasters or anything, really, because they're Fighters. <laughs> I wouldn't mind Sentry if nobody wants that. Otherwise, I can fill. Sure. Okay. Personally, so... uh, sorry, you go. No, no you go. I was gonna say I was I was looking at leader, seeing as I'm literally playing a a, a leader of the tiefling, and okay. I'm a charisma boy. So that would leave Alex as the outrider if Alex wants to do that, or you can give it to one of the companions. I'm happy to be outrider. I mean, it kind of makes sense tracking threats because you know I'm I'm a monster hunter basically. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Just to be clear, you're not locked into these forever. You can change these with mm -hmm. every journey. So if you decide you really don't like doing one or you just don't fit it, you can change them next journey. You are locked into it for this journey, but that's it. So just is to... there like a thing where you can like improve at being one, or is that not? A not thing? really. It's just like okay. your stats as they go up. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, Aegis, you are being the quartermaster, yeah? Yes. Cool. I have added a feature into um, your features tab. 
it's under background journey roll quartermaster just gives you a, a quick reminder of what the quartermaster does and what they can yes. do um, so you don't have to go into the journal for it uh alia you are a liar sorry which one alia alia <laughs> <laughs> uh, you are getting the leader role uh, added, so again, you should see that under features background. It doesn't replace your actual background, it's just in that same section. Right. Um, and then the ruined, you were being the outrider. And Hopefully I don't need to roll perception. <laughs> Zela, you're being the sentry, who is probably the one more likely to need to roll perception. Cool. Alex. Yeah. No. You need to take a fat rip of your USB. Fat rip of my USB? What? Yeah. Blow, blow a little smoke drone in this again, Beth. Oh. Uh, cool. So, the next thing is you need to determine a route. So, obviously you can't see all the names of locations on the world map just yet, but I would like you guys to try and work out how you'd like to travel out of the mountains basically map out a path to where you want to try and get to. Feel free to use the ruler and what have you. Well, just from looking at the map, it, I think it would probably make sense if we try... Wait, is this like... What is... is there a compass in this? Oh, yeah. Um... North is north, to be fair. Uh, on, yeah. So sometimes I will, I will, I will just like fully clarify. Some maps I will occasionally go to and be like, yeah, north is actually to the left or whatever. But most of the time, north is going to be the top of the map, and on the world maps, it will be the top of the map. Yeah, I, I think we should probably try and go like southwest and try and get on that like track. Yeah. So kind of trying mm -hmm. ahead in this sort of direction. Yeah, because then the you know the less mountainy areas where we get into a clearing, and then hopefully it will be easier to find like the road and everything. Okay, so if we go to here, then we're looking at about three and a half days just over these mountains here. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is going to be your destination then, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Okay. I do have one question, right? Which is, do we know if that's controlled by? Uh, the boys, I can't remember their name. Arzamor. Uh, roll yeah. me a history check. Because if it is, then if we get on that track and head south, we're going to encounter a, a checkpoint of some sort, in my eyes. Checkpoint. I'll also roll. So. 14 nice, 18 very nice, 17 very nice. Cool. Um, tell you what, with a 17 and an 18, let me just put the political overlay on. Oh, nice. Uh, okay, so that's, that's fine. Yeah. Cool. So the last thing I wanted to do was get onto a path, and then it'd be, it'd be like, yeah, we're home free. And then they're like, hey, we're yeah. checking your papers. And they're like, well, yeah, fuck. Yeah. You'll notice that obviously the mountains themselves are not part of any political area because mountains are really fucking hard to control um, yeah. and like settle in. So you're technically not in Arzamore territory right now, but you're kind of in no man's land right now. Whereas Alicia. Which is why they'd be searching. Yeah. Whereas Alicia. While they might potentially search in Elysia, they would be stepping on another kingdom's toes. So, cool. All right. And uh, yes, if you're wondering, these can change. So, as things happen during the campaign, you might see some of these regions change, which I'm excited to. I did notice that they had uh, um, hexagons. Hexagons. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Uh, so. Yeah, trying to get to kind of like this point just below the forest here then. Um, yep. yep. All right. Cool. So the next stage then of Uncharted Journeys is that you've determined your your route and your destination. So now you need to prepare. So if you go into the journal entry and you go to stage two, prepare, um, and then uh, go to make preparations, like the subcategory, it's going to list the different preparations you can do for starting a journey. I'm going to read out uh, the ones that are valid for this particular um, journey because you can't do all of them because some of them require you to be in like a settlement already before setting out on your journey. So the first one you can do is you can, uh, as a preparation, you can do one preparation each, by the way. So as a preparation, you can assist an ally with their preparations, which gives them an advantage on their preparation check. Um, you can brew tonics. 
So Brutonix will um, require you to do an intelligence check. On a success, each party member has an advantage on constitution checks and saving throws for the entirety of the journey. Um, they will lose this benefit the first time they fail a constitution check or saving throw, though. Alex, you look like you might have a question. No, so I, I, I was trying to find uh, the preparations thing, but I just found it. Okay, so cool. Anyone else looking for it? You can also use the search pages thing if you need to at the top as well. Mm. Uh, next, so you got yes, yeah, so you got uh, assist ally, you got Brutonix, you got Carouse, which is where you just go fuck it. I'm gonna party, um, <laughs> which uh, uh, means that you make a Constitution saving throw, uh, not a Constitution saving throw. Sorry, you make a Constitution check. Uh, and then on a success, you are filled with a love of life. You have advantage and ability checks during your first encounter. Um, on a success of five or more, you have a joyful and memorable time as well as advantage. You also learn something valuable about the journey and decrease the journey, journey difficulty by two. I've already determined the difficulty, by the way, but I don't tell you what the difficulty is. On a failure, you have disadvantage on all ability checks during your first encounter on the journey. And on a failure of five or more, uh, you not only uh, have disadvantage, but you also have no more than uh, half your total hit dice, which will be zero because it's rounded down. Uh, just note, by the way, a three-day journey is considered a short journey, so you're only going to have one encounter. All right. Uh, so yeah, that's Carouse. Chart course, you can spend your preparation time trying to chart your course, uh, hopefully reducing the difficulty of the journey by five, on a failure, though, you will increase the journey difficulty by two. You can consult the occult. On a success, each party member may re-roll a failed saving throw once before the end of the journey. You cannot hire help because you're in the middle of nowhere. You can pack up. Uh, pack up means on a success, you will reduce the journey difficulty by two. You can prepare a feast. On a success, the first time each party member suffers an effect that would make them gain a level of exhaustion. They do not. Uh, you cannot procure anything, so we're going to skip all of those. You can rally the party, and you then choose what type of rallying you want to do, and they each have different effects. You can research, which means on a success, each party member may re-roll a failed ability check once before the end of the journey. You can't really seek advice, but I will let you with die. I think we can maybe finagle that, because Dai is wise and has mystical powers, but normally you'd be consulting locals and what have you. Um... You can study the weather on a success, reduce the journey difficulty by two. So basically, just choose one of those that you want to do, and if you can't remember, obviously read through them, and then just uh, say which one you want to do. Callum, you have your hand up. I feel yes. like I'm a teacher right now. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to study the weather, please. Cool. So we'll do Callum's thing first, since he's decided what he wants to do. Uh, so you want to study the weather. So to study the weather... You survey the state of nature around you and do your best to forecast the weather for the next couple of days. Um, so, uh, make an intelligence or a wisdom nature check. So, basically, uh, wisdom, I think, is... Uh, sorry, nature is normally intelligence, I believe. Yes. But you can do it with your wisdom stat instead if you prefer, is what that's saying. Cool. A 12 is, unfortunately, a fail. Um, again, if, you, if you've I would got like to use my inspiration, okay, cool. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, take that inspiration off of your uh, front page and then just re roll that nature check. Then, Draft and darn it. come on, nature, don't fail me now. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> that'll still fail. Uh, luckily, a failure has no negative impact, but you don't get the success either. It's worth a try. It was absolutely worth trying. Uh, Arlia, do you know what you want to do? Uh, I'll pack up. You want to pack up. Cool. Okay. Uh, so packing up is either going to be a uh, athletics check. Well, it is going to be an athletics check, but you can roll it with either your strength or your constitution stat. They are both exactly the same, but I'll go with strength. Cool. Would you mind if I assist because I can't really find something I want to do? If you want to assist, then that means that you uh, don't have to do anything, Samo, but then Tommy just gets advantage. So. Cool. Cool. All right. Thanks, Samo. <clears throat> cool. A 23 is absolutely a fucking success. And so you, you spend the next hour or two uh, consolidating all the supplies, packing up all the tents and such like, 
and making them uh, making sure that every single backpack is as light uh, to kind of carry as possible. And as a result, the journey difficulty has been reduced by two. Um, just to, I don't know if I've clarified what journey difficulty is. It's a DC that you roll during the journey. So you just reduce that DC by two. Oh, okay, cool. Um, cool. Um, just a random question, by the way. This is not going to really be super relevant other than it's just good to know if it comes up. The kind of like sled thing that you were dragging that you went on you still keeping that with you or are you leaving that behind now since he's better depends would we have trouble uh, with our stuff otherwise or no. like with the I, carrying would, stuff, I mean or? you can put it all on there but like it, you were finding it difficult to like move around the terrain with it with a person on so if you dumped all your stuff on there it would be the same thing in terms of mechanically it's going to make no difference it's just like role play wise would you all ca keep it with you or would you go we don't need this anymore and leave it behind my character probably wouldn't care i would like to take it with us just so they don't have anything to be like ah oh, people were here with a sled fair i mean you could break up see, tiny wooden pieces instead but yeah see i was gonna go the other way i was gonna say it might make it easier for them to spot us if we're carrying it with us you will probably move slightly slower with it at the very least, so. Up to the leader. I said ditch it. Okay. Hey. Ditching it. Cool. Um so, uh next up then, uh the ruined. Uh, um I looked over at the OVS to to double check character names because I'm still getting used to them. <laughs> and I went I've also just noticed at the bottom where it says players, Alex is just listed as playing the. <laughs> he doesn't yep, do surnames. It's considering ruined a surname. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, I will consult the occult. Cool. So, you spend a few hours practicing esoteric traditions to search for signs and portents concerning the difficulties that lie ahead. So, maybe you try and, like, read something in the stars just as the sun is starting to rise, or maybe you're, like, throwing up bones and then consulting them as they land. Whatever it might be, that's what you're doing. Um, so, you can make an arcana or a religion check. Uh, I will go with arcana. That is unfortunately Yikes. a fail. I believe you've also got inspiration if you do want to spend it. Uh, sure, why not? Uh, what does inspiration do again? It's just you get to roll again. Oh, uh, re-roll. Bardic inspiration we're treating differently because that is like a d4 I think it starts off as. Very nice. Um, but yeah, inspiration we're going to do as Baldur's Gate where you just get to roll again. Cool. Um, With also, a, this is just for the entire journey, right? We don't have to do this every single no, day? No, for the full journey. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, uh, fucking that 21 Arcana is absolutely a success. And so, yeah, that doesn't affect the DC, but that means that each party member may re-roll a failed saving throw once before the end of their journey. Oh, very cool. That is very nice. Take that. Okay, so you've now all prepared... We now make the journey. So, as I say, you're only going to have one encounter. But first of all, we need to do a group travel check. So the group travel check is the DC that we're going to have to hit. This represents how well you as a party work together. If you work as a cohesive unit and everyone performs to the utmost, you're going to have a good time and you're going to avoid most hazards and events that otherwise would uh, cause you to have a hardship. But if you perform poorly or you aren't united in your efforts, they may make you double back on your route or stumble into unforeseen circumstances. So each one of you must make the travel check, choosing one of the skills or tools listed in your role description. So you can either consult that in the journal earlier up, or if you go to your character sheet, it's uh, in under features next to your background. Um, the DC for this ability check is secret, but Tommy has reduced it by two. Um, and then... Basically, it's how many people succeed versus fail that determines what effect what actually happens. Okay. So, what exactly do we have to roll? So, if you consult your um, your role, so you're playing the sentry, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So you can do any of the things that are listed under group travel checks. You can do first watch, uh, oh, which right. is a perception check. You can do slip the noose, which is a stealth check. Or you can do hide in plain sight, uh, which is using a disguise kit. None of these have, like, any benefits. It's just what I want to do, right? It's what you want to do, but obviously it's your stats. So it's whatever yeah, you're yeah. best at, potentially. Okay. Well... So we'll go around the list again. Uh, Arle, what are you uh, doing? Not well. We'll start with Arle. Fuck it. I was going to start with Aegis, but I got your names confused. <laughs> uh, the group travel travel check, yeah, with yeah, uh, so full... outward confidence in with itself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll do outward confidence. Cool. So you are a bastion of hope and optimism to those around you. Can you give me a persuasion check, please? I can. Hell yeah. That is a success. Nice. So that is one success for the group. Aegis, you're playing the Quartermaster. So, what are you doing? Fuck, I'm mute. Uh, what am I doing? Fuck, man, I don't know. Yeah, what are you doing? So you can do Share the Load, which is a athletics check using EV or Strength for your constitution. Um, oh, dropped my pen lid. Uh, you can use blacksmithing tools or leatherworks tools to try and ensure your gear is all up to code. Or you can use cook's utensils or brewer's supplies to start off your journey right. Well, I can't do the last two because I don't have the tools yet. Rip. <laughs> Does I'll get anyone them. else have them? Because if they do, I they can lend them. blacksmith tools. Do yeah. you have them? I have them. Please. I have all sorts of shit. Sa Samo doesn't have blacksmith tools, and we think he might have fucked up creating his character, but we're not sure, and so he made the agreement to go, uh, well, uh, yeah, oh well. <laughs> but apparently Tommy already has them, so I guess Tommy and Samo can share them when they want to. Yes. Oh, hold on, no, I should have them, but they're not in my inventory. Are you pr no, being proficient with them doesn't them, mean that you have them. You don't them. own them. So I your, think your I got them with being folk hero. Your background yeah. and class determine what stuff you can start with. So it might not have determined you could start with those. But you are proficient I'll in them. Smithing supplies. Because, <laughs> <laughs> for example, I'm proficient in herbalism kits, but I don't have one. And blacksmith See. tools are pretty expensive, so I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't give them to you up front. I don't know, yeah. certain, but I wouldn't be surprised. Um, Let me quickly check in that, but I don't have them in my inventory, so I don't have them as far as it stands right now. Okay. Either way, Pete, I'm going to share the load. Okay, cool. Um, Tommy, just real quick, so you're playing Folk Hero. Yes. It doesn't say on the actual character sheet what you start with, but let's just see if I can find that for you. Ah, uh, yeah. Tool proficiencies. Oh, no. Equipment. A set of artisan's tools. One of your choice. So, yes, I should have... Blacksmith. You both apparently fucked up creating your characters, but it's fine. It's a pretty minor thing to fuck up. <laughs> uh, honestly, the fucking... I don't know what's going on with D&D &D Beyond, but um, all the stuff it normally has automatically didn't happen, and I had to do it all manually. Just yeah. to double-check, it's I not didn't... in your backpack, is yeah. it? Yeah, and then, and then I guess it didn't put them in there anyway, even though I did put them in manually. I so I, well, I swear. <laughs> yeah, even my weapons weren't automatic. It was really so annoying. How do you want Smith's tools as well, if I'm doing this? I mean... <laughs> If you're, I mean, I'm offering. Go ahead. Sure, I guess. <laughs> Fine, you both got it. Hell yeah! Let's sell one of Blame the software. software. <laughs> See, I'd very much like to become proficient with the poisoner's kit and herbalism kit, but <laughs> looking at these things, maybe I should get cartographer's tools first, because that, that would be pretty insane with my agility. Uh, oh wait, no, that's not agility. I read ability as agility. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Fuck cartographer's tools. I don't need that <laughs> shit. Fuck that shit. <laughs> All right. Uh, so coming out though, Aegis, give me an athletics check with either strength or constitution as the uh, attribute. Okay, so you're just going to add one to this the, this roll then, because I'm going to use my well, constitution. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So instead of a plus one, it's a plus two. That is a success. Hell yeah. Very nice. Then. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next up, we will do the Ruined, who is playing the Outrider. So uh, I will blaze the trail. You're going to trek ahead of the rest of the party, navigating the wilderness and finding the best routes to set off on. 
So give me a survival check. That is also a success. And finally, the sentry. What are you doing? I will slip the noose. Cool. So you keep to the shadows and out of sight as the party departs, making it hard for anyone to follow your trail. Make a stealth check. That is a failure, unfortunately. Oh. I had the best fucking <laughs> roll, and then I... Fu <laughs> fucking yeah, unfortunately, the DC after everything was 16. So, <laughs> wait, this is a skill check, right? <clears throat> it is a skill check. Um, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> what you want to 1d6 or something? <clears throat> no, I'm not just having yeah, so, yeah, the Quartermaster could spend the soul... Uh, wait, what's your proficiency bonus? Is it plus one or plus two at the moment? It's plus two, plus isn't two. it? So you could Start spend one there. of your two die if you wanted to, um, then uh, Callum, uh, allowing uh, Samo to add a d6 to that, which would make it an automatic success. I will mm. say, up front, in terms of mechanically, the minimum number of encounters you can have is one, and the result of everyone in the party succeeding the roles is that you get minus one encounter and you only have one encounter for this short of a journey so it would have no might be fun. but what i'm saying is that the minimum is one and you're yeah. having one so the minus one has no effect oh so there has to be one always. there has to be one always oh, so okay. therefore it's kind of a waste of the dice roll um okay, yeah. because it's going to happen one way or the other i'm going to say no yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Either way, the overall net result is that the majority of the group is successful. So what does that mean? Um, so um, the more than half the party succeeds means that the the base number of encounters is plus zero, which is unmodified, uh, and that means that the the sole encounter that's going to take place is going to take place. I've already rolled for that just because I wanted to be prepped for doing uncharted journeys for the first time. Um, does that mean I need to roll now? It does. At, good point. You, you do kind of throw a wrench in the works of your special feature. <laughs> um, that's fine. Um, cool. Yes. So, can you roll me a d12? Because we're in the mountains, so we already know that bit. Uh, we just need to determine what actually happens as a result of us being in the mountains. And I'd close the PDF, so I'm just going to reopen the PDF real quick. Because I haven't brought mountains fully in yet. Ooh, I accidentally full screened that, and I didn't mean to. Just roll the best thing. Um, you rolled a one. Okay. So then I'm going to, as I say, disclose to you what the type is of the one that you're that I've already rolled and the type that you're you've just rolled. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you get to choose what type you want to do. So a one is a chance meeting, and I rolled a two, hidden reserves. So a chance meeting means you are going to have a random encounter with someone or a group of people. They might be friendly, they might not be, but they usually tend to lean more towards friendly because there are other ones for more dangerous things. Hidden reserves is you're going to find some sort of supplies. They might be money, they might be supplies for your journey, they could be really anything, but it's items, basically. Maybe a blacksmith's kit? Potentially. <laughs> it, it could be one of them, yeah. So, I, as I say, I've already rolled for Hidden Reserves, so I know exactly what the Hidden Reserves one is. On chance meeting, I will then roll a d10 to determine the exact encounter. What are we feeling, boys? Hmm. I mean... Sure, the chance meeting could also give us items at the end, but... Potentially. Since we... Did basically just break out of jail. We don't really have anything. Uh, hidden... I would also rather not meet anyone yeah. while we are currently fleeing. Mm -hmm. In our yeah. current situation, I would say hidden reserves, probably. Also, the reserves, it might be something that is useful to tell everyone, around, uh, everyone about back at, at, back at base. True. So, somewhere they can resupply on journeys. True. Okay, yeah. starting with hidden reserves. Okie doke. Uh, 
Um, cool. Anyone doing anything over the next three days? Because this encounter is going to happen on the third. Oh, actually, let me measure because this is still happening in the mountains. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bum. Yes, it's going to happen as you're coming down the mountains over here then. So yeah, anyone want to do anything over the next three days? Um, I'd probably just be sparring with, um, I've forgotten her name. Guy Fieri. Kytheria. Kytheria, yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, it's down. Do you want to role play that out, or do you just want to say that that's what you're doing? I'll just say that's what I'm doing. Cool. Anything else for anyone else? Uh, it's three days. You want to spend three days of gathering? <laughs> I mean... I mean... <laughs> yeah, if you want to. <laughs> uh, give me free nature rolls. Let's go. That's actually a very good point. Um, can I join in on that with uh, food, food hunting? Sure. Uh, we'll do all those in just a moment. Uh, yep. The nine is a fail. Uh, the eighteen and seventeen are both successes. Uh, so. Oh, by the way, uh, so you're not sparring with Kyferia, Kyferia at all, then. Uh, well, I mean, if there's time during the day, sure, but yeah, my priority is getting yeah. food. Yeah, forget getting food. Okay. Uh, but, and, yes, Callum? I've been meaning to ask, I know for downtime activities we can learn stuff and become trained in it, or mm -hmm. proficient in it. How do we go about becoming expertise? Spend more time training them up. Okay. So, would it be just spending more time training, or if you're actively trying to become expertise, but would it be just like constantly using that skill would train you up? Yeah. So, in terms of like expertise, I'm gonna say it's it's a mixture of theory and practice, right? So you ha you can't just like read books on it. You actually have to like try and develop that skill as well. You have to keep using that skill in, yeah. in that way. Right. Cool. Uh, so you found um, one more lightning loss. Mm -hmm. And you found three, no, sorry, four silver form. One more lightning loss. Yes, yeah, so you have two lightning moss currently. It's a light blue moss that grows only where lightning is struck and gives off a faint static electric shock when touched. Um, and then Silver Fawn is uh, a fawny vine of a pale silver color and is hard as metal. Patches of Silver Fawn create difficult terrain, but yeah, you've managed to harvest four of them. Cool. Uh, so we know what Callum did. Uh, in terms of food, just before you actually go hunting, Tommy, uh, do, you, do you want to use up the last two of the deer rations before we move on to everything else? Yeah, sure. So, you are covered for two days, um, and then, well, no, let's do it this way. Uh, so, six of you, so you cover two, let's say, the two NPCs, just to make it simple, and then all of you can remove um, one ration each from your backpacks. So, if you all go into your backpack, you can then just remove a ration each, because you should have ten in there. Mm -hmm. To do that, just click the pencil symbol to edit it, and make it nine rather than ten and then tommy give me a survival roll to go hunting yep, yep, yep wait. three of them uh if you want to do it for all three days then yeah yeah i think technically by the way with uncharted journeys you can't do this but for this one we're gonna allow it and i will double check that in the rules between sessions um because i think it's like you have to like, like prepare stuff. beforehand um, I'm going to say the 17 is the only success there, but it's a pretty good success. Um, so, uh, you find enough rations for uh, everyone for an extra day. So, for the second day, everyone's fine. And then on the third day, again, uh, remove a ration each from everyone. So, you should all be down at eight at that point. Oops. Hold yeah. Backpack. Backpack. Cool, that's all the admin -y sides of things. So. Uh, 
Um, where am I? No, that's not where I wanted to be. That's where I wanted to be. Okay. Uh, Is it working for you? It's working for me. Can I do something? Oh yeah, sorry. Yes, of course. What do you want to do? Um, so I'm I'm looking at the alchemy stuff, and I notice that there are some like plants and stuff that you need. Mm -hmm. So would I be able to try and find the, the plants? If you want to find try and find a specific plant, then that is a higher nature role. If you just want to like search for plants in general, it's the same as what Apus is doing. Okay. Um why is why is it oh there we go. Uh Yeah, I, I I'd like to try and look for a couple of specific plants. I don't care too much about a higher AC or DC because no rush. So okay. I may as well try and take my time finding them. Um, I'd like to look out specifically for flame lilies and frost lichen. Flame lilies and frost lichen. So let me first we'll see whether they're even in the mountains. They're not. So this is going to be a very hard roll. Basically, I'm going to go with 22 and up. <laughs> Oof. Uh, oh god, I need to roll a 19. Uh, what will it be? Nature? Uh, yes, please. Sure, why not? Uh, is that one roll for each day, or just one roll in general? One roll for each day is fine if you want to do it for three days. Sure. Okay, first day, nothing. Um, is it nature? Oof. I'm just gonna... Roll my random. You're fine, you didn't get in that one. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate. Uh, but oh well. in the future, maybe. Um, I don't know for certain where each of those are, but I think frost lichens in like frosted areas. So not mountains, but like snowy areas, arctic areas, that sort of thing. Mm. And then um, I think the other one, I can't even remember what you said it was called, but I'm, right, I did look it up and I think it's in deserts and such like Flame Lily, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I've just looked up, yeah, they are in Arctic and uh, Desert. And they might be in other places as well, but they're definitely in those two areas. So Just, just out of curiosity, if I wanted to become proficient um, in like another tool, do I need to have the tool first? To be able to get proficient in it, find or the could, tool, like... or find the tool and have a practice of it, or find a book and read on it, or both okay. to like make it faster. Or someone cool. who knows about it, would that also work? If someone can train you up on it, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Cool. All right, we're going to transition to the next scene. I'm going to quickly just pause the game because I'm going to go grab a drink. But we find. Our adventurers, as they're coming down the slopes of the Lelion Mountains, three days have passed now, um, and now it is around about four degrees, and a heavy fog hangs over the pinewood forest as you come down the slopes of the Lelion Mountains. And I'll be right back. And so, yeah, you come down the mountain slopes, you come through this kind of pinewood forest, you come to... Well, it, it, there is a thick fog hanging over the area, so you, the visibility that you guys currently have is accurate in terms of uh, um, you can't see very far in front of you. Um, but uh, And it's also snowing, just to make the visibility even poorer. Um, but uh, yeah, you um, think that you've kind of come into a bit of a clearing. Can I get you all to give me a perception check? Yup. Uh, I have my eyes uh, I mean, look, the sun is out, and although it's not shining in your eyes, Zila, you are worse at night than you are during the day. Yeah, you mean the other way around. That's what I meant to say, worse during the day than you are at night. 
Um, this is why I'll never be a Brenly Mulligan as I get my words jumbled. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, with a nat one, Zila, you don't see anything really of uh, value. The fog is thick. The uh, the snow is getting in your eyes. Your all things considered, actually not too tired, but you know it has been a long journey. Just not used to this weather. It's fine. Yeah. Um, the ruined with a thirteen. Uh, yeah, you think you're in a clearing. With the eighteen and the sixteen Aegis and Arlea, as you walk through the forest, we'll say with the eighteen, you're the first one to notice it, Arlea. You step on something that crunches underneath your feet, but it doesn't crunch like a twig or a stick. It's a different kind of crunch, heavier, shall we say. I want to take a look, see what I just stepped on. You stepped on what appears to be the skeletal remains of a dead soldier wearing old, old armor. Armor <coughs> you don't recognize. But uh, given the condition of it, probably at least a couple of centuries old. Could I roll history? Sure. With a non-nat 20, you remember hearing a story about a great battle that happened in these parts back when... A long time ago, the dwarfs were settled down here as well before they kind of all went back into the kingdom of, uh, of... Oh god, I can't remember the dwarfs' kingdom off the top of my head. Oh, this is why I have too many names for things. Kingdom of Beard. <laughs> I, yes. I want to say it might be Stone Bay, but that... No, Stone Bay's the orc one. Um, oh. Uh, I'm in the wrong fucking folder. That's why I can't find that document. Um, My yeah, territory. The Kingdom of Earthhold, game? maybe? Okay. Um, yeah, so long time before they kind of got uh, beaten back into the one fairly small kingdom up north, um, they they spread out all over the place. Uh, hill dwarfs, you know, uh, mountain dwarfs, obviously. Kingdom of Haskara, there we go. Um, mountain dwarves known for living within mountains and in mines and such like, but hill dwarves, they spread out all over the place once upon a time and uh, that was a long time ago and most hill dwarves are dead and most dwarves have rescinded back to the kingdom of Haskara. Obviously, you can find dwarves in pretty much any kingdom, but in terms of massive settlements not really a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. You remember reading a story about one of the great battles they had against the Kingdom of Arzamor, back when it was a kingdom before it became an empire. It was called the Battle of Sigvaldir's Keep. Where supposedly a dwarven necromancer reigned over this area. And uh, the mighty Kingdom of Arzamor banded together to strike down this evil. And they were successful, but it, it came at a costly price. And this was a time before dragon riders and such like as well. This was you know, foot soldiers against foot soldiers, but the foot soldiers of Sigvilde's keep were servants of a necromancer. I'll um, put my hand up and I'll say... What will you tread? We were at the site of the Battle of Sigvaldir's Keep. As All right. I think that means it's not good. Uh, it was the Battle of uh, the Empire versus a dwarven necromancer. And where there's necromancy, well, you know. Nothing good. Well, that's very damning. Let's Any just magic. hope the, uh, sorry. 
Any magic can be wielded by good and evil. It doesn't matter the magic itself. I agree. But in this case, let's hope they did a good job quelling the necromancy. All is right, says I. Even after death, necromancy's magic can linger. This might have been the site of a battlefield, but now it's the site of a graveyard. Necromancers and graveyards don't tend to mix. I would argue they mix quite well. Hmm. However, on the plus side, this will make for a fantastic tale back home. Are, are zombies like a thing? Yes. Like, is, is it? It's, it's well known that zombies exist within this world. Uh, it, whether your character knows about them, go ahead and give me a nature or a history roll. Or, or even an arcana roll. Fuck it, you can do whatever you like. I go for arcana. A perception roll. I want to see if there's any around right now. No, yeah. zombies, they're the <laughs> stories told to children to scare them at night. No, absolutely not. I mean, you, you remember reading one particular... Um, or not reading the stories that weren't really written down as, as much back in the, your day in you know, you come from a rural village. You remember uh, once a, a troop came into your village and they put on a, a little puppet show um, uh, called The Shambling Dead, which followed a, uh, a a once great knight who wakes up in a temple after the fall of the world and zombies have taken over. And he has to kind of reunite with his family and then... Wait, <laughs> wait, hang on. I, th I think I've I think I've literally just like completely ignored the whole idea behind this class. I th I'm pretty sure I get like advantage to recalling information about like fate and undead and stuff. If, if you do, <laughs> then great, you can roll again. <laughs> yeah, I, I wait. I I need to try and find it. I'm pretty sure, sure you told me about that. I think that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's like Hunter's Bane or something. It's, or is it, that... it's ironic that you almost failed to recall that you can get advantage <laughs> on recalling things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that one on, the, on his roll for recalling <laughs> things, so it makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I, I I have I have advantage, so okay. I'll re-roll. Love that oh, how his whole me. his whole speciality is undead. It's like. Wait, do I know zombies exist? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm really good at undead. Yeah. I've fought a few monsters, but zombies? No way. Absolutely no way. not. That's where I draw the line. That's Cannot me. exist. <laughs> we're Pure we're fiction. We were 15. You then recall after that. But, but the shambling dead is based on a true story, and yes, zombies are real. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to remember my fucking class features. I like I barely ever use it when I'm playing a blood hunter. I always use like, you know, my my subclass abilities and whatever. The base blood hunter stuff, get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Oh fuck, I forgot to reset the dice stats. I'm gonna have to manually subtract the ones that were from the first session off. Anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> At the moment, they're all going to be bundled together, and I'm trying to both give you campaign-wide and session-based, but anyways, I'll have to manually do that. Um, we, we record dice stats, by the way, um, which I would have put in the description of the YouTube video for this, but uh, the YouTube video for the first session, I'm about 200 characters away from hitting my limit of 5,000 for the description. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that I have to say in there about, like, credit to different things and whatever, yeah. so... Anyways... The game is unpaused, like feel free to, to move ahead. Measured? If you want to do measured, that's fine. It keeps the pace so that people don't zoom off, but if you all just don't move too far ahead, then that's fine too. Live, folks, um, the uh, music. I think what happened is I reset some stuff on OBS and it's apparently forgotten about the fact that um, basically the music track is supposed to be streamed but not saved to the VOD and I think it's just decided not to stream it either, which is annoying. 
uh, but yeah, I can't modify it while live. It's in the recording, so... Uh... You want to reset the stream quick? Nah, that's fine. No. You don't get your music. It, it won't be in the VOD <laughs> either way, so it's only going to be for the folks who are here live, which I appreciate you being here, but just put on some creepy music. That's that's the vibe we currently got going on. Um, but yeah, it's in the recording either way, so... Gonna suddenly go into a full sprint and then just halt. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Sambo, do you want to do the music for the for you us? Please don't play music over a microphone. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> just not just that. Wait, what, what were you getting at? I just wanted you to hum a little tune, man. Isn't the grandfather of disco from Germany? That equates to playing some this is the music song. for the <laughs> This is the song that's currently playing, right? Oh, you judge my tra la la. Yeah. Oh, yes, the bro. Yes. My ding ding dong. Gotta try and replicate the violin. Re, re, re. Yeah, the character can't play the flute. She doesn't have one, but. <laughs> that another yes. thing you were probably supposed to get from you. Yeah, oh, where's yeah, my nice fucking flute? She <laughs> um, finds a stick on the floor. Hey, Aegis. Roll me a perception check. And you know what, Zila, roll me a perception check as well. Uh oh. Sure. Fingers? I perceive Fingers. bad things happening. I see to me. everything. Ooh, God damn. Zila, it's a good thing that you passed your perception check. You notice that in front of you, around about here, is a hole in the ground. And it, it, when I say hole in the ground, I mean like it's unearthed earth, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, as you step a little bit closer, you see it's moving. Oh. The hole is moving? The earth in the hole is moving. Like something shifting underneath it. Well. But Aegis, you failed your perception check. Well, guess I keep going. And something grabs you. Oh no, it's a zombie. Gorp. Who can actually see Aegis right now? Because I can't. I can't. Gorsh, see it's a zombie. I can see him. Okay, cool. Gorsh. Cannon to the ruined. Gorsh. Sorry, can you give me an athletics check? Sorry, but against the 22. <laughs> athletics against the 22, eh? <laughs> they got a good yeah. roll. Okay, uh, it has grabbed your leg. Uh, uh, uh. And uh, just as that happens, you hear from your whole Zila. And uh, this thing jumps out of the dirt, and uh, but luckily you got a nat 20, so you are aware of something coming. So, Seeing as I saw the ground shift before anything even happened, would you let me draw my weapons as a free action? Yes, of course. course. Cool. That's not a problem at all. Now, folks, if you've got creepy music going, uh, put on some slapping action music. Um, yes. put, on, put on the classic track. Alright, players, roll me your initiatives. Oh, Dark Souls 3 Boreal Vort guy. That's what he means right now. God damn, that probably initiative is always ass. <laughs> Please. I've been rolling fucking awesome rolls all session, and then initiative comes up, and I roll a fucking three. Well, Without a fail. Don't you worry, I roll a one. Oh. <laughs> well, what is about my initiative? <laughs> yeah, everyone's initiative's ass except for the ruined twenty-three. Fucking Chad. <laughs> all right, the ruined. Uh, can you currently see uh, the? Can you see Zila or the zombie or the zombie in Aegis? I can see both. Cool, you see both then. What would you like to do? Uh, can I have my weapons out? <laughs> um, would you have had your weapons out beforehand? I mean, probably, because I mean, this this was kind of where we were heading. Uh, I mean, you're not at your destination yet. You're still like half a day away. Yeah, but I mean, like, we're I mean, we're on the move. Like, I'm not gonna just 
be unarmed. Okay, so you would have your weapons always drawn when traveling, is what you're saying, like in your hands. Otherwise, yeah, because I'm I'm basically the scout, aren't I? Fair enough. So then, like, yeah. yeah. Okay, then you uh, you have your weapons out, sure. <coughs> um. Yeah, I won't bother with hex. Sorry, I looked over at OBS and I saw Samo's camera and I was like, wait, Samo's not in his camera, it's just a door. And then I realized that Samo <laughs> is in his camera. <laughs> uh... Fucking corrupted right now. <laughs> it's terrifying, what the fuck? The best part is he's mm. deafened himself, so he can't hear us. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, can't really do much at the moment, so I will just run up behind this one. Okay. Hello. Is that your turn? Hello. Yep, that's my turn. Bro, my bad, man. My fucker asked where the fucking, like, razor is, and I'm like... Bro, do I look like I shaved in the last, like, three weeks, bro? What the fuck am I? <laughs> Unfortunately, Kytheria does not have any ranged weapons. So she does have daggers, actually, doesn't she? Uh, alright. Yeah, she has daggers. She can use daggers. Um... Okay, she's gonna run up... ...to here. And she's gonna throw one of her daggers. And I can't wait until I get my subclass. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> um. Okay. A fourteen hits, and that zombie takes two damage. Cool. So she's given the zombie a weapon. Uh. <laughs> the uh. The. The, uh, the, the dagger goes through the air and just into the zombie's neck, and it seems completely unfazed as this dagger just embeds itself through its neck. Ugh. Unlucky. Okay. Uh, Alright, this zombie bursts out of the ground. There's three... Gosh, gosh. Bro, how is my six initiative? How am I like? What's going on? I didn't think zombies existed. And, uh, <laughs> it will move up. That's now he knows better. Uh, cool. This one bursts out of the ground. And we'll move up. Uh, this one will burst out of the ground. And we'll move up. Dangerous. Good thing they're slow, motherfuckers. This one will burst out of the ground and move up. God damn! And then it starts turn. Move up to here. Fireball. Uh, da, 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 um. And yeah, he's gonna cast a spell. See, now I'm thinking I should have used Hex. You thought it was just two zombies? 
I mean, in this area, perhaps. Unfortunately, one of his main ranged cantrips does dex uh, does ne necrotic damage, so. Uh... Fuck it. Ah, good thing I didn't use hex. <laughs> no, that's not gonna work. Out Alex, the undead master. <laughs> um, this also wasn't the last. Knows so how to kill the undead. <laughs> yeah, he can't really do much from this range because a lot of his spells are not combat the utility. So he's gonna just uh, double move up this zombie. Okay, so uh, yeah, this uh, this zombie bursts out of the ground. <laughs> Disturb the dead's peace, y'all. Sorry, guys. Um, I had another one, goddamn. This zombie bursts out of the ground. Can't remember. I, I, do the, I'm pretty sure the zombies have uh, the thing where they have a chance of like coming back. You um, you got a 15 that. before of your nature, right? Yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't know that, I'm afraid. Okay. Um... Oh yeah, I can just use it on the bottom here, right? Yeah. Bing. Cool. A 14 will hit. Cool. Okay, you take seven points of damage. Uh, 13 will also hit. Bong. And oh, assist. yo, what's all this stuff at the bottom of my screen? Did you not see this at all off screen? <laughs> no, because my laptop is in the way. <laughs> I can't see the bottom of my screen. I, I didn't have it. I didn't. I didn't notice it last oh. session either. I already noticed it in combat oh. this time. You might have toggled it off because we were talking about toggling it. So maybe you actually toggled it off rather than toggling it on. Don't know. I don't That's even have sick. my. Yeah, I don't have my uh, character's thingy open anymore. You doing anything else, Zila? Uh, no. Cool. Oh, the zombie is still standing, but you do seem to have hurt it. We'll take that. Wait, can you attack using this? Yeah, yeah. you got to use, use, use item, item, but uh... Ah, oh, okay. You can use basically anything except for, like, skill checks. You know what Even I'm gonna... that I think you can do, because you can, like, click, um... Oh, no. Oh, my bad, my bad. You can click the save skills tools just above your, like, character art, and I think it allows you to do that yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alright, I'll, I'll put Foundry on my laptop screen so I can actually see all of the features. <laughs> Um, cool. Wait, Zila, where did you go on the initiative? You've disappeared. Yeah, uh, the, he, I, he I rolled his initiative. I accidentally silly. rolled the initiative thingy on the thingy at <laughs> the bottom left. You went after Dai. Uh, Even before, before me. Yeah, but yeah. there were two zombies in, in the way, so you rolled an eight, I think? That sounds about No, it's six, six point something I rolled. We'll six point seventeen oh. was what I had. Uh, there we go. <coughs> yep. Um, cool. Then, Arle, your turn. Okay. These two are dead. Thank you. Time to do the thing. Oh my god, say it. Angry! Why is he angry? Uh, they jump scared him. Yeah. <laughs> I detest cheap jump scares. <laughs> I did do a scream at the microphone, so that's fair. <laughs> Twenty-three will hit. Um, how does rage damage work? It's extra two damage, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Currently, anyway. 
two melee damage of strength uh, weapons, resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Nice. That's 14 damage. 14 damage. All right. What do you do to this thing? Uh, I am going to lop its head off and uh, put it back in its hole. <laughs> Cannon. Yep. And it fails a roll. So yeah, you chop its head off and you send it flying into this hole. Sick. Cool. That your turn? Um that is my turn. Okay. Uh, this one bursts out of its hole. Mm. Alright, the one that's holding on to Aegis. It's going to try and attack you, Aegis, and you are currently grappled. Oh god. Oh god, it's touching me. What was that, sorry? It's touching me. It is indeed touching you. And it believes in a thing called love. Uh, <laughs> does a seven hit you? No. Alright. It's, it's holding onto your ankle. It tries to bite you, but you're like obviously struggling and it doesn't manage to secure its gammy jaws around your ankle. Um, love that word. What, gammy? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, it's your turn. Um, I'm going to say uh, that it doesn't take a full round action to break free of this grapple because it's literally holding onto your ankle with one hand. So it's like a pretty loose grapple. So you can okay. break free, but it's not going to use up your entire action. It's going to use your move action instead. Ooh. You can also just attack it if you want to while grappled. I mean... Okay, yeah, I'll use my move action to ungrapple. Okay, so it's going to be... You can do athletics or acrobatics. It has to do athletics. Didn't draw great, so... Uh, you absolutely break free. You're sore. Oh, You're flying. Get off. And with that, oh wait, no, I just use my move action. What else are you doing? Well, I was gonna move, but I can't because I just use my move action. Correct. You could use your action as a move, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay. So it's going to spend its uh, attack of opportunity on you. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Does a 10 hit you? No. Okay. Whoa. Okay, that is your turn then. Yep. Unless you've got any bonus actions or anything. Okay. This zombie bursts out of the ground. That's a lot of zombies. This zombie bursts out of the ground. Uh... I apologize, Alex, for leaving you. That's okay. I'm not one for combat. I am aware. 
this zombie burst out of the ground. Uh, what shall we show you? That's that zombie. Who's that zombie there? Who's that? And then, uh, yeah, um, uh, you will hear a rumbling from the ground as of lots of dust being moved at once. Um, and then, this zombie bursts out of the ground. Yeah. Step on one fucking grave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say for such a big thing, though, that's a full round action for it to burst out of the ground. And finally, end of round one, this zombie bursts out of the ground. All right. <laughs> Round two. What? The ruins is it return. Large or huge? Um, that is large. I will hit this zombie. Hit that zombie. Hit it. One hit this time. Uh, one hit this time. Um, I'm getting a tutorial. Why are you getting a tutorial? Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't, because I haven't used any of the features below, so I'm now I'm getting tutorial for it. Okay. I didn't get uh, tutorials for them. What? <laughs> oh yeah, no. Uh, okay. Um, attack. That is a hit. Very nice. Oof. Seven damage. Okay. And then I will use my bonus action to hit with my offhand. Still hit. God damn, what is this damage? Oh man, every little bit helps. True. And that'll be my go. Um, I've just realized it's don't think it's gonna um take it out of the fight. Um but Kaifiri should have rolled uh, sneak attack with her damage from the dagger earlier. Because it was surrounded by uh teammates. Excellent. Her sneak attack did damage did an extra one damage to it. <laughs> <laughs> uh cool. So yeah, that's your turn, yeah. Yep. Cool. Then it is my furious turn, and uh, she is going to kind of, as she's like running, she kind of like pauses for a moment, spotting the ogre roaring and unearthing a bunch of dirt in an absolute rampage, and just goes, fuck. And she's going to run up to this one. He is going to draw her rapier and attack her. Uh, 16 will hit. Does 6 damage to it. And, oh, click the wrong fucking thing. Uh, and then sneak attack damage. Top of that. She did exactly enough damage to kill it. Um, Dang it. However, it is not dead. As she stabs it with the rapier, and then it and comes back to life. Just a moment. Yes, they do have undead fortitude. Um, cool. That's her turn. So, uh... This zombie bursts out of the ground. <laughs> 
zombie is going to double move. This zombie is going to fall into this ditch, and that's its turn. Uh, this zombie is going to attack Dying. Yeah. And it got a nat 1. It goes for him, and he just darts completely out of the way, and is going to position himself over here instead. going to burst out of the ground. Yeah, yeah I'm a big fan of DJ Khaled. <laughs> um, okay. Die is going to uh, allow an attack of opportunity. Him. And now he's going to cast Fireball. Oh, goddamn. to make dexterity saving throws. The first one fails, and that is enough to take him down immediately. Uh, he is going to make his constitution saving throw. He needs to beat a 27. Funny enough, he doesn't beat a 27, and he is dead. Um, does fire not affect their uh, revive thing, or not? doesn't say it does. Oh. I know sometimes some of them say that fire does. Um, cool. This one is going to make its dexterity saving throw. Which it fails. So, same thing. I, you know what? I'm not even going to bother rolling the con saves because they ha would have to get a nat 20 and it's just a lot of effort for me to roll for each one individually. So, uh, I can't be bothered. <laughs> uh, I will do the dexterity saving throws though. Even though they're not likely, not likely to beat them. They might. That is a fail. Let's go die racking up that XP for us. Yeah, god damn. <coughs> <coughs> but also, screw you die, because this place has got to smell dreadful now. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure it smelled good before either. They've all been uh... frozen. Yeah, true. I, I would also say that this place, though it didn't smell like great, but probably not. Smells a hell of the worse now. Yeah, okay. Who doesn't like Especially this kind of after barbecue? that big fella came out. Mmm, barbecued ancient flesh. It's like wine. It's, it's, uh. Yeah. It's, uh, what's the word? Ages. It's. It's. Antique. We'll go with antique, but it's not the word. Vintage? Vintage! That's the one. Uh, but to be fair, like you just you just said, oh, barbecued ancient meat. Isn't that just McDonald's? <laughs> yep. Yeah. More like whack Donalds. Um <laughs> He says as he like helps himself to more of his McDonald's. I I I had a home cooked burger today. Oh, okay. Yeah. But after launching that fireball, incinerating one, two, three, four, five, six of them, Dai then says There are more coming. You can sense them in the fog. This may be a fight we can't win. Oh, great. All right. This zombie is going to double move. Zila, your turn. Just grab my 
nice looking little snacks in the back. Alright, great game. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I had a question. So, I'm not sure if this was the chakrams we talked about who could do this, but we talked about like some weapon being able to just like return to me after being. Chakrams control. return to you as long as they hit the target. Cool. Um. Would I see if the big guy in the middle had like, like, is he already looking at someone? Uh, yeah, he's probably looking at Aegis as the closest uh, opponent. Okay. Cool. <laughs> well, in that case, I'll force this. Step back a little bit and throw my chakra at him, and like, kind of. Like, yeah, I'll, 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 yeah, I'll just, I'll just do it. This is just a normal attack roll since it's dex. Yep. Yeah. Uh, thirteen. Uh, that will hit. Cool. Very nice. Next damage. Uh, nine damage. Yeah, you launch a chat room and and it like. Hits it in the skull and then bounces off and comes back to you. Sick. Captain I'll America again. style. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, that's pretty good. Nice. Uh, and 11 still hits. Damn. This one is going to slash target. his fly instead. Yeah. But, uh, another another 9 damage. damage. Hell yeah. I'll take that. I, I mean, this might be good news for you. It really depends on um, what your plan was, but it turns to face you. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I want. I'll, I'll, I don't know how fast this guy is. I'll, I'll, I'll walk back on the floor. Okay. Um. All right, this one's gonna move up and fall for a ditch. Uh, Ale, your turn. Well, I got a rage that needs upkeeping, so you it's know. A slap show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love how that is like, this is a fight we can't win. And then. Well, this, like, let me finish. Like, throws the chakrams, and then he's like, well, I'm angry, so. I'm angry, <laughs> I'm not, well. I just don't want him to walk up to you and break your skull in. Like. I was kind of willing in the face, like looking up in the air. <laughs> 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 when he spawned in. Not gonna lie. Yeah, let me just double check what I, I got here. I did a smile on my face when you moved away from the zombie and I went, oh, look where you're moving towards. <laughs> yeah. I would like to um, cast Thaumaturgy. And with that, you can't. I can't. Raging. You are raging. raging. You cannot ah, ah, raging. concentrate. You can end your rage as a bonus action. Oh yeah, I'll just end my rage then. Okay. You can't cast any spells while raging. I thought it was just concentration once. My no, bad. No spells. Yeah, if you, you, you just bear in mind, you, have, you currently have one rage use per day, I believe. That's if, fine. If you use it, it's it's up. I this think it's efficiency based, so I think he has two. I have two. Oh yeah, two. Yeah. Um, cool. So you spend your bonus action ending your rage. Uh. Oh, let, let's just double check. Farmatology is not a bonus action spell because you only get yeah, it's an action. Fine. Cool. And then. Well, I know all too well. Trying to misty step. Oh, I'm raging. Yep. I am going to cast Tormaturgy and and emit the sound of a woman screaming help. Here. Okay. Help! Help! <laughs> help me! Ah! Help, help me! Ah! She's terrified because there's zombies. I'm terrified because there's zombies. I didn't even think they were real. <laughs> and as Alex knows, being the master of undead, the undead, oof, they love their, they love their scared females. <laughs> I'll go for them instead. Cool. That's going to be 
just the area that it's coming from. I know for a fact that they're all going to go and try and help this woman. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, zombies want brains, but particularly if it's like an elderly lady trying to cross the road, of course they're going to stop to help. Yeah, right. And then she's exactly. brains. <laughs> I just, just want to emphasize she's screaming really loudly, okay? Okay. Um, really can you just loudly. Post, uh, Farmer Taji into the chat just so I can read it. Yes. Because they're bad guys doesn't mean they're bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he's an asshole, but I don't think he's 100% a dick. <laughs> and then I'll move. Okay, cool. All right, rub it into the chat, man. Have to help my boy, oh, yeah, just in case. <laughs> cool. All right. <laughs> the zombie shambles up there, and then goes. Next zombie's turn. <coughs> All the zombies right now being like, wait, a hot single in my area? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the zombie's gonna turn around and try and attack the ruined. <clears throat> but a nine will miss you, I believe. Yes. Cool. Hey, just your turn. Okay, so what, the plan's running, guys? You saying that in character? Yeah. I see the two people below me are not attacking, and Dai said that we're gonna run, so... That would probably be the smart idea, says Kyferia. Don't have to tell me twice, and I'd like to dash. <laughs> okay. <coughs> With that, I'm getting out of there. Uh, are you going to jump over that tree or climb over that tree? Uh, I'm gonna do this. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I see you've solved my fallen tree puzzle by going round. <laughs> Alright, this one's gonna dash and then fall into a ditch. Oh, this one's going to burst out of the ground. And I'm going to say he can't take a move action because literally the turn before was a zombie falling on his face. So he, he bursts out of the ground and then just a zombie lands on top of him and he's just... <laughs> um, cool. Uh, this zombie is going to burst out of the ground. Realistically, guys, this is an infinite XP farm. <laughs> True. Alright. Let's just linger. You're welcome to stay and farm it, Samo. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Big Daddy. Does it have reach? It does not. So it is... Alia, he's not. Okay. Uh, then instead it's going to double move. So that he can get up in Alia's. Oh, actually, if it's going to double move. It's going to Zelo instead. Because you're the one who aggroed it. Hi. Your turn. Uh, I'll take another swing at this boy while I'm here. Okay. Yikes. Okay, you actually successfully stabbed the sword into it, not doing any damage, and instead just getting the sword stuck in it. So you're going to have to spend your move action removing the sword. Okay, well, 
I'll take a second slash at him with my offhand then, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'll try and remove the sword. Fucking hell. That does hit. Oh, yeah, shit. Yeah, they okay. low <laughs> And it only had one hit point left, because that's what Undead Force 2 does. So it is dead. And then, yeah, you can spend your move action removing your rapier plus one, or you can leave it behind. It's up to you. Absolutely not. I will be <laughs> taking that as soon as I can. Or you can do it during this turn. It's just you end combat. Yeah. <clears throat> No, I mean, as soon as, like, the body drops, I'm picking it straight up. Yeah, so you shove your first sword through its stomach, and again, it, ha it has no real reaction. It just gets stuck in the meat. You bring your other rapier, and you stab it through the side of the head, and then you basically just pull both out and kick it, uh, and it falls over. Nice. And that will be my turn. Because oh. you ended your turn, and I was about to end your turn for uh. you. <laughs> That's the one thing I'm going to have to get used to, but it's fine. Um, cool. Running, man. Good. Um, she is going to crouch down as her action and pull out the dagger that was in its throat that she threw earlier. And, <laughs> uh, then she will run. Alright, this zombie is going to approach die. Try and slam him. Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. Uh, 15 hits. He is hit. He has been hit. He takes 5 points of damage. Alright, this one's gonna move up to you, Ruined, and slam you. There's a 22 hit. Oh, yes. You also take 5 points of damage. Ouchies. <clears throat> this one's also going to come and try and slam you. But I believe a 9 will miss you. Yes. Alright, die's done. He is going to try and quarter stop. That'll absolutely hit. He deals 8 points of damage to this thing. And you know what? He's a homie. He's going to stay with you until you can move. Because otherwise, nice. if he runs off, then this zombie will just attack you, so. Uh, this zombie runs up to the sound of the screaming woman. <laughs> then the other zombie goes, well, what the world? Zila, your turn. Uh, I will... Engage. And run like there. Okay. And because it's a little bonus action, I'll throw my weapon at him. Actually, I won't do that. Okay. Um, but that would probably be my turn already. Well, yep. you've, you've moved and you've taken your action to disengage, so if you've got any other bonus action, then... <coughs> yeah, you know. no. Cool. Um, Alright, this one climbs out of the ditch, and we'll uh, double move. Get to here. Oh, there. Good turn. Okay. Um, I'm gonna rage again. Cool. It's really and, cool um, it, like grays out your rage, telling you that you've used it all. The bomb. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. It's a Baldur's Gate free vibes, and I appreciate it. It's just nice and easy. Uh, 
Uh, I'm just going to double check something on your character, but you carry on. Okay. Vomitology is not a concentration, so yeah, it's persisting for the minute. And 19 will absolutely hit. 9 damage. 9 damage. Hell yeah, cool. Is that your turn? Yeah. Okay, this zombie. Wait, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> now yes. What, what did you do? Oh, you moved? Yeah. I moved around a little yeah, bit. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. Cool, yeah. This zombie is still confused by the sound of screaming woman. Aegis, your turn. Well, we can run out of one of the small guys, but that big guy is a big problem. So... Uh, woo! That was a bad. I didn't mean to do that. You cast some spell on yourself? <laughs> no, I clicked the wrong button. I thought it was a ruler. But it was not. Thank you, Pete. Um, cool. um, well, I hope this works. And with that, uh, I will grab some components out of, out of my little pouches, uh, grind them down into a nice little purple dust. And with that, I'm going to cast Fairy Fire. Oh yeah. Alright, so it's going to make a Dexterity saving throw. Yeah, cool. Uh, assuming Violent Light based on the, the dust. Mm -hmm. The colour of the light, I assume, is a Violet Light. Yes, yeah. I accidentally did that dexterity saving for his Al Alia. Um, Alia. Alia? Alia. I'll, I'll, get, <laughs> I'll get them eventually, I promise. Um, Alia, good news, you passed that saving for it, not that you needed to. <laughs> uh, the ogre zombie didn't. Uh, it rolled a five. Congratulations, uh, everyone now gets a van, I've got it. Cool. Yeah, so um, it now sheds dim light for 10 feet. <coughs> so I grind up this little violet powder and then just sort of blow it into the direction. Um, cool, so that's your turn, yeah? Oh, you haven't moved yet. No, I haven't moved. I am going... Uh, yeah, I'll move down again for now. Okay. All right, this zombie picks himself out out of the uh, the ditch. This zombie picks himself up out of the ditch. I just want to have a good day, so they're just confused. They're just confused, guys, and you're hurting they're them. Just, they're just undead men. Just, <laughs> just normal men. Apparently I never revealed this person on the turn order. But they um, are revealed. Um, hmm. Which one's closer? Just about die. Uh, right, this one's going to double mo Well, it's going to single move and fall into a ditch, actually. Um... <laughs> Ogre Zombie's turn. Uh oh. Alia, you were the last person to hurt it, so it's gonna come for you. It's common. Good news is you're raging again, so. Uh, does a 16 hit you? Uh, my AC is 14. Cool. I, I don't know what kind of offenses I get from raging. None, but you take half damage from like bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing. Uh -huh. So, 
you are going to take 12 half down to 6 damage. Okay. That's, that's still scary, but okay. Yeah. Um. All right, the ruined your turn. Okay. <coughs> <coughs> well, it will take a little bit for the zombies to get over here. Screw it. I'll, I'll try and kill this one. He's trying to XP farm. Oh no. <laughs> his hubris, his arrogance. Oh, I'll oh, wait, that hits. He hits. <laughs> but only just. Nice. Ooh, nice well, 11 uh, damage. And then. offhand. It's that doesn't eat him. All right, it's still up, but it does look hurt. Doing anything else in turn? I was hoping I would kill it so then I could move away and potentially only get one attack of opportunity. Um. So nah, that the would... cost of a disengage, you could have just not been a hit. Yeah, but also XP. <laughs> I thought I could get the best of both worlds. You know what, I'm going to stay right here. I'm going to see if I can okay. finish it off before I move. Thanks for getting that XP for us at the cost of your character. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll Head stay put. going to be an action, right? Not like bonus action. Disengage is an action, yeah. Not shove, I mean. <clears throat> shove is also an action, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, my fairy double moves. This zombie's gonna try and slam die. A 19 will hit him. He takes four points of damage. Next zombie's turn. Well, it's got two targets, so I'm gonna roll to decide who it attacks. It's also gonna attack die. That also hits him. He takes two points of damage. But the next one is well and truly going to target you, the Ruined. Uh -huh. Does a 15 hit you? Miss. Okay. <clears throat> nice turn. He's going to continue on the one that he was already attacking. Uh, so he's going to try and hit it with his staff again. Uh, that is a hit. He rolled a one on the damage die. So he does three points of damage. Damn. Back into the stick. Zombie is still confused. Zila, your turn. Uh, oh. Oh. Out the roll. You have advantage? You do oh, have yeah, advantage, right. yeah, reroll. It hits either way, but you might get a nat 20. Yep. Okay. That one would have missed. Uh, um, oh, well, yeah. That's, oh, my God. Oh, the damage. Four points of damage. Cute. I'm gonna take the second one. Nice! Oh, hell yeah. Uh, nat 20. Cool. Roll, Roll again for double um, nat 20. Real quick as well. Um, <laughs> just to just note, um, it's fine for this particular one, but um, I've normally said we just double everything for a critical. Um, I've been... I've read the rule more accurately, and the reason why it's double the dice is because it doesn't actually, it shouldn't double everything. There are certain bonuses that you might get on certain attacks that wouldn't be doubled. 
So in the future, when it pops up, just like critical hit for the damage if you roll a nat 20, because it will okay. double the die rather than double everything. It's fine this, I'll just make it 14, but yeah. Okay. So you've technically been doing it wrong the entire time, but whatever. I mean, I think for this one, it wouldn't even matter anyway. I think it would still be... Yeah, I mean, it's whatever. Uh, yeah, I thought it was just a house rule. Um, it was a house rule because I thought it was... Too. It, I thought it was because I just thought um, the reason it was double the dice was because um, you were like less likely to roll really low, but also less likely to roll really high. And I just always thought that was a bit naff. But uh, after looking into it, it's, it's specifically because of the extra bonuses that you might not get. So, the still Usually you still roll very good critical hits, but it's like, um, yeah, if you can get like a passive plus six or whatever from some random feature that doesn't get doubled is the idea yeah. um basically it just means that you can't like stack loads and loads and loads of bonuses and then get all of them doubled they all stack up independently and then the dice uh gets doubled obviously if you're rolling more damage die then great but um Anyways, you did a very nifty 14 points of damage as you uh, go this time, one of them. You do double sneak attack damage, yes. Um, it's any damage die get doubled as part of the attack, but not any other things, basically. Um, this chakram this time goes and goes directly into the ogre's eye, and um, you think for a moment that, like, it's not going to come back to you because you're like, oh, that embedded deep chakrams normally are like slashing past as they then come back sort of thing um and then um it does come back and takes the eye with it <laughs> so you catch the chakram with an ogre's eye now attached to it a very rotting ogre's eye because this is a very 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 old corpse but uh and slightly frozen eye as well for that matter yeah I'll, like scrape it off with the other chakram I have <laughs> cool uh, for your turn, are you moving as well, or...? Um, dim, 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 dim. Wait. Uh, I can move a little bit. Yeah, that's me. Okay. This zombie is still confused. Oh, there, your turn. Hey! A 19 will hit. The other one was in that one, so that's a good thing. <laughs> to be fair, the that one was the second dice, but still. Yikes. Five Not damage. damage. But uh, five damage is still helpful. Cool. Doing anything else in turn? Um. Mmm. Uh, yeah, fuck it. I'm gonna uh, try and retreat. Okay, so you are moving, and it's gonna use its reaction then. Does a 12 hit you? No. Okay. As you run away, then it takes a swing at you, and it lands directly where you were just a moment before you run off. Oof. Cool. This zombie is still confused. Aegis, your turn. Cool. I'm gonna <coughs> move a bit further back. Uh, with that, I will take out a little bit of my flint. And I will once again flick it out as I cast a fireball at it. Cool. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell I'm assuming yeah. at the ogre and not the zombie you actually just targeted. Oh, yeah. Whoops. <laughs> <laughs> That's all good. Nat 20, though. Hell yeah. Um, two nat 20s, in a, well, not in a row, but very close to each other. Hell yeah. Um, oof. <laughs> this is the downside to it. I mean, it would have been less damage, actually, if it had been uh, rolled mm -hmm. normally, but uh, still. Uh, four damage fire. Do it. <sighs> Shaking my head. Yeah, you can tell it didn't really strike particularly great. It kind of grazes its shoulder, but you hit. 
Uh, doing anything else in your turn? You muted yourself, so if you said no, then I didn't oh, hear sorry, it. I said no. <laughs> <laughs> cool. This zombie is still confused. This zombie is still confused. This zombie is not confused. It's all right. There isn't a ditch. It climbs out of the ditch, and it moves up. But it's just out of range of die, so it's going to have to double move to get into range of die. Ogre zombie's done. It's going to double move. Motherfucker. It, it charges you. Oh. And this zombie is confused. The ruins turn. <laughs> this zombie is confused. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Go for another swing. Got to make a constitution saving throw. Which it succeeds, it's back on one hit point. Okay, then I will go for my second swing. And oh, that will also hit. And yeah, you're gonna kill it, but you can roll damage just as. yeah. You do indeed kill it. Okay. Like all of our damage rolls are kind of like... I don't know what the going on. Well... Hmm. Yeah, I'll, I'll finish it off and then... Sort of turn to die and say, Well... Time to scram! When you come to your senses, he says. Away into another battle. <laughs> yeah, I'll uh. Into the actual battle. I'll take the attack opportunity. Cool. You also rotated your token, you heathen. Oh. Uh, cool. This one, yeah, we'll take its attack opportunity on you then. Oh, I fear he's done. Uh, she's gonna keep running. And then, uh, we'll keep running some more. Like I fear, yeah. Confused. Oh no, this is a zombie that's not confused, don't mind. <laughs> no, it's just a zombie that's not not closer to the sound than it is to an enemy, right. so <laughs> it hits die. And he takes two points of damage. One's also going to attack die. That will also hit him. It takes another four points of damage. It's done. Look, this shit I'm out, I think is the exact words he uses. <laughs> uh, he's going to. Uh, single move, and he's going to take three attack of opportunities from that. Couldn't you disengage? He could disengage, but he's not. Uh, also, only two attack of opportunities because one of them used it on you. Uh, so, uh, 13 will miss. Take seven points damage. Uh, and 
the reason why he didn't disengage is so he could then do an old classic. Fireball. Yes. Okay, don't. Uh, that one got a nat 20 on its saving throw, hell yeah. Fails at saving throw. Middle one. Fails at saving throw. So yeah, only one of them succeeds at saving throw. Uh, so, first one takes 15 points of damage. And the other two, again, I'm not going to bother rolling the con saves because they cannot pass them without that 20. While I could use the bonuses to my dice stats, whatever. I'll probably win out in the end anyways, because I roll more dice than y'all. The worst thing about the smell, by the way, not just the barbecuing of it, is that it's also like it's uh, it's fouring them, right? So like it's then like fresh dead meat rather than frozen dead meat. <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. That is his turn. Uh, this zombie is still confused by the sounds. Zila, your turn. Um, okay. Can I make like a running jump on top of him? If you would like to mount him, then that would be an acrobatics yes. check. Sick. I'm going to say it also takes up one of your two attacks, so uh, okay, you can only take one of your weapons. Mm -hmm. Acrobatic. Cool. It needs to be a 16 then to stop you from getting on top of it. It does, unfortunately. You Surely jump on. He's mounting it, it counts as an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's not how the spell works, but... <laughs> What spell? He's, he's fairy fire. Fairy fire. <laughs> you know what? No, he's, we're, he's no, we're, we're trying to. We're counting it as an attack. Yeah, up. fuck it. You can have advantage on that. Sick. I got you, Sarah. Uh, oh, no. well. uh, you I jump. <laughs> you jump on its back, and it basically just like pivots its uh, mass so that you are going to fall off of it. With a, with a sixteen, you're fine. You're not going to like fall prone or anything. You can still slash as you fall off, though. Cool. I will do just that. Bing bong. I give you all these chat. I give you all these things that way when you just and I fuck it. Just don't I almost won that twenty. Fuck. Uh, you do hit though. I'm also gonna say that as a result of this, you've ended up here. But cool. Eight points of damage to it. Hell yeah. It was a cool idea. <laughs> The, yeah, the unfortunate thing with cool <laughs> ideas sometimes in D and D is that you also need to roll to pull off your cool idea. Yeah. <laughs> um. Cool. Zombie is confused. Alia, your turn. Okay. <laughs> Go back in. And I will Let's attack. He's back. <laughs> That's been my reaction, by the way, to every single casting announcement of the Daredevil Born Again cast. They, they announced today that Bullseye is coming back, and just every single time I just hear John Wiggum, I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> So I don't know whether you heard this, Alex. It's written by the writer of Punisher season one. As well. Oh the, shit! The Reeve doing of it. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Sixteen damage. Very very nice. So if that means he's back, he is back. Mean... He's confirmed that he's back in it as well. That's not even that a means, rumor. That means Punisher has a chance. Well, well, in terms of his own show, yeah, but he's confirmed he's back in Born Again. Yeah, I know, but I I don't care about that. I just care about his own show. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I will watch Born Again, just for the Punisher. You're going to need to watch that but... <laughs> season three first, because the more we hear about it, the more it's sounding like it's no longer a separate show. It's very much sounding oh, like a season a four. Apparently, all of the Netflix shows have been canonized now. Yeah, Echo canonized them. Yeah. But, yeah. Still, still a little unsure how that works, okay. because there were some stuff around the blip that uh, was... Um... 
missed out but you know okay well the, the, basically the netflix shows will take place before the blip is, is right. the simple answer to it um and then spoilers for echo it's in the trailers daredevil is in it and for a very brief cameo and it's during the blip we're done but yeah um cool that your turn earlier yes yeah, apparently it's written by the writer of Punisher Season 1 and directed by the directors of Loki Season 2. Which I've not watched yet, but I've heard good things about, so... Uh... Yeah, I, I'm probably not going to bother with Loki Season 2. Can't be asked for time shenanigans. Fair enough. It's fucking phenomenal. <laughs> it's really freaking good. Alex does not like time bullshit. You don't even keep up with Marvel, you read books. Fair enough. I... This is the first year since, since I think, 2012, where I have not really kept up with Marvel anymore. Like, I watch the stuff mm. that I care about, but, like, I've fallen off pretty fucking hard. Yeah, same here. Mm, no yeah, apart from Loki. Yeah. It. I mean, I want to watch Loki. It's just I just didn't get around to it when it was coming out, so I'll get around to it eventually. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I'm... I'm trying to get back into the comics again. Like, I, I, I just the other day read the um, Punisher 2099 comic that released in like 2019 or something is that the same and one's like set in the same continuity as spider-man 2099 and what have you i i think it is but i i i'm not sure because i know that uh there was another punisher 2099 like you know way in the past and i don't know if that's the same continuity so i'm a bit confused but i'm i'm preparing to uh to get into the new joe garrison punisher series fair enough I think, to be fair, if you think too hard about continuity of any comic run, you just go, oh, this doesn't really make sense. Yeah. Like, for starters, all of the superheroes have been active since the 60s, and yet pretty much all of them are the same age. Yeah, I, like, the most confusing for me was the Ultimate Universe, because I started reading Miles Morales, mm. and then, like, when he got brought into the main universe, he apparently also got, like, put back and then like the universe is like merged or crossed or something and at that point i was just like i have no fucking idea what is going on right now who ex who actually exists within the main universe now who knows anyways uh aegis your turn okay um i'm gonna risk not disengaging Okay. And I'm gonna move just into the tree line. That was so close to a 17 on the die. Uh, a 9 will miss you, I believe. Yes. <laughs> cool. Uh, and with that, I will flick out another fireball. Oh, sorry, I moved off of your turn. Sorry. Apologies if I wanted to do something. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, 23 will hit. Thanks. Two points of damage. Yeah, some might say I have a damaging fireball. <laughs> <laughs> it's a singeing fireball. It's a singe bolt, that's what it is. Um, cool. I assume that's the end of your turn. Yes. Cool. Zombies are confused. Well, good news is, zombie is dumb, so it's going to try and uh, attack Aegis again. So, uh, Zila and Arlea, you can have your attacks of opportunity. Zila, you go first, because Arlea is AFK right now. Hello. Uh, an 18 will hit. Heavily, heavily injured myself while I was away. Time? No, I did something time. new. I um, Rachel asked me to pass her her bottle of water, and I don't know how I did it, but I just like slipped. You know, like you 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 you're about to drop something and you start fumbling it around and you kind of make things worse. No, I always make it better. I've always caught things. Always, yeah, I'm sure. Um, well, I did that, and I didn't just drop it. I somehow managed to completely reverse the situation and just full-on throw it at my foot. 
You throw it on the ground. I throw it on my ground full force, straight mm. on the vein she of my foot. And your it's... handouts. No. Well, I didn't need her handouts, apparently, even though... Um, I don't know how it works, but yeah, pain. Well, you know what else is in pain? The ogre zombie. Uh, Azila, how do you finish it off? Hey! Oh, hey. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually end up melting it now. Just, I'll, I'll just keep Whoa. stabbing into it, like, from, from behind. Okay. I mean, I guess, slashing. Yeah, so as it charges towards Aegis, you, like, basically grab one of your chakrams, you basically stab it into its back as, like, a climbing yeah. thing, and then jump up next one in its back, and you just repeatedly do that as it continues to run after Aegis until you get to its head, and you burrow both chakrams into its head. Can, can, the, can the ogre, like, die right, right in front of it? Yeah, sure. as, as, it's, as it's charging towards me, I'm just wincing it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that was an attack of opportunity as well, so if Tommy hadn't been AFK, he could have got the kill. Because both of you got the attack of opportunity, but... Well, that's fine. It's almost too busy for It's him. about the... Yeah, I was too busy fucking finishing myself off. <laughs> <laughs> that could be taken in different ways. Yeah, man's trying to get my game rage or something. Uh, the ruin, your turn. Okay... <clears throat> I run. Take ten. Yep. Cool. I hear he's on another map now. I'm gonna make a make exception check. She succeeds. The soul zombie he left who's not confused is going to double move after you guys. Oh wait, no, he wouldn't double move after you guys. Sorry, tell a lie. Let's put him back there. Oh, he's closer. He'll double move towards die. Nice turn. Uh, okay. Gonna try and attack with his staff. That'll hit. Six damage to it. It's still up as he moves away. So it gets its attack of opportunity on him. Uh, which will hit. Take seven points of damage. Zombie is confused. Zelo, your turn. Um, you dismount the corpse first of all. Yes. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I'll I'll look around. I, I see everyone, right? Like. Yeah. Die as well. Okay. The only person you can't you can't see is Kyferia. Would she technically not still be in range? Nope. Just she's that far away. I mean, your she range. She ran into the tree line. Yeah, so. she got she got off map last turn, and your vision yeah. range is what like sixty feet. So yes. she's more than sixty feet away by now. Jesus Christ. Okay. I mean, if um, she moved off, so she took a single I mean, I, I, single move to get off map. Yeah. Then she double moved. Yeah, and, okay. and then she's potentially double moved again. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, I know everyone is quote unquote safe. So I'll just, I guess I'll I'll ready my action to attack anything that would maybe attack earlier or die since they're like the the furthest away from us. Okay. Doing anything else? No. Okay. That's really cool that you can mark a readied action. That's that shows up on the initiative and everything. It's cool. Yeah. Not that I tend to forget that often, but uh, Arlia, your turn. Okay.
Um, I can't believe you guys solved my ogre zombie puzzle. <laughs> By the way, this joke I'm stealing from Mo. I don't know where Mo got it from somewhere, but I'm stealing this joke from Mo. It's something she says as a dungeon master is, you solved my whatever puzzle. Oh, right. Okay, I was going to say, I, I, I didn't understand the context of you <laughs> saying this. So. Just just being a silly little goober. Yeah, just a little, silly little guy. Yeah. I'm going to go here to kind of show Dai, like, hey, I got you back, man. You do realize he's blind, right? You just don't, like, he can hear me, let's be honest. Also, you know, if you haven't worked out yet, Dai is blind, but he has weird ways of still being pretty, pretty not affected by the disability. Yeah. Including while in combat, so. He's like some sort of daredevil. He, in terms of how he does it, no, but yes, in terms of functionality. Cool. Are you turn? That's my turn. Zombie is confused. Hey, just your turn. Uh, cool. Um, what am I gonna do? Uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Hey guys, uh, Kyfira went this way, and I'll point the way that she ran off to. Hey guys, Aegis here. Kyfira yeah. ran off this way. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and I was like, I'll I'll go get her, and I run off. <laughs> Okay. There I go. Uh, cool. Uh, did you want to double move? Ooh. Yes. Uh, there is Kai Fury, by the way. Ah. Uh, excellent. In that case, then I will indeed double move to her. Cool. Can you make me a perception check? Sure. Uh, with a nat 20, you noticed just, like, uh, quite quite a while before you reached the ridge that Kaithiri has clearly just, like, ran up to the ridge, uh, that there is a drop here, um, and the terrain here seems to have fallen apart. Uh, as you look out, you can see through the mist that various bits of the ground have collapsed underneath, and you get, gather that there was probably some sort of building underground once, but the roof of that underground building has caved in, meaning it's now exposed to the elements. This is interesting. You doing anything else for your turn? Nope. Cool. The zombies are all confused, so we're gonna skip all their turns and we come back to the ruins turned. Ruins turned? What? Ruins turned? I said it again, fuck. The ruins <laughs> turn. Uh for some reason doesn't look right on stream view. That's fine, I'll fix that. I'll just bounce into the to the woods, I guess. Cool. Uh, did you want to use up the rest of your movement on the next map? Yeah, sure. You got 15 feet of movement left, I believe. Cool. That will do. All right, Kyferia. Oh, did the same thing again. Uh, <laughs> Kyferia will uh, turn around to Aegis and say, "What are we doing? Are they still coming?" Uh, yeah, we we took out the big thing, so uh, everyone should just be. Heading over shortly, I guess. Which way? What the way the, the way they're coming or the way we're going? Going. Ugh. I'd rather wait for everyone. Okay, then she will wait. The zombies are confused. Um, I'm going to say it now, just in case I happen to forget by the end of the combat. Uh, Tommy, have an. No, it wasn't Tommy. It was Tommy. Tommy, have an inspiration yeah, point for uh, a very good use of formal clergy. I was going to say that, but I wanted to do it until after the 
I was gonna wait until after the combat, but I just went, I might forget, so... Uh, yeah, uh, I think that's a very good use of Four Turgy Cantrip that I normally don't find many uses for, but against very dumb zombies, uh, it lasts a minute, which is ten rounds. It's a very good use of it. Very fun. And I will... Chat for Tommy. I will double move. Wait a second, did I skip a zombie's turn? I wasn't confused. I might have skipped a zombie's turn that wasn't confused. I did skip a zombie's turn that wasn't confused. Oh no! Uh, so die was like here. So the zombie will double move to get to him, in which case I won't double move. He will use his action to attack it with his core staff. That is a hit. Deal seven damage to it. It needs to do its con save. Which it passes, so it's still back up on one hit point. And then die will move. Is 30 feet. Invoking attack of opportunity. Then the zombie is confused. Zelo, your turn. Nothing has triggered your ready to action. Actually, no. I suppose the attack of opportunity would have invoked your attack. Uh, your yeah, that action. guy up there, right? Yeah. So go ahead. And this isn't your action. Well, this is your action from the last turn, essentially. So. A nine would hit. Yeah, the seven wouldn't. It's on one hit point, so, you know. Don't need to hit ah, it with right. both. Okay. <laughs> oh, so the, the first one would have done the thing anyway. Yeah, it, uh, it got brought back by Undead Force Jude, so. Yeah, alright, well, in that case, do I have to roll damage or anything? You can if you want to, but there's no really need to. Oh! Okay, and then it's your actual <coughs> turn, so... Um... Yeah, well, uh... We're heading just back, right? So, um... Well, you're not heading back where you came, you're heading further yeah, south like, than you were, but... Yeah. Um, going where the rest went. Cool, so... Uh, just gonna measure how much that was, that's... 21-ish feet of movement. Yeah. Uh, so... so yeah. Zombie is confused. Alia, your turn. Okay. Uh, I can't see anything. We were on the wrong map. Sorry. <laughs> you're still Sorry? on this map. I didn't bother to move the stream over to this map because like everyone's done here, but you're not done here. So. Alia <laughs> got lost. Um. Oh, your rage is ended, by the way, at this point. Yes. Start running to the tree line. Cool. You haven't made it off the map yet, but you will next turn, so that's fine. Zombie is confused. Aegis, your turn. Still waiting for people, or do you want to move on? Yeah, I'm waiting for everyone to appear. Then we won't bother moving to that map. Zombie is confused. Zombie is confused. <laughs> Zombie is confused. Uh, the Ruined. Are you waiting for everyone or do you want to move up? Um, I... 
I'll move up, but I can't see anything. That's fine. I wasn't going to move map if you were just going to wait, basically. So, yep. uh, that's fine. There you are. Okay. Um, gonna move up to here. And roll perception to see if there are any sort of obvious dangers or anything interesting. Sure. Uh, I mean, you can see masonry through the fog, uh, collapsed pillars and such like this was clearly a place of you know, of substantial, um, what's what I'm looking for? Well, it was built up, right? It was someone uh, made it. It's it's a historical site of some kind. Uh, you'd guess something like a keep or a fortress or a palace, that sort of thing. But you don't see any danger beyond okay. accidentally falling if you don't pay cool. attention to where you're stepping. Uh, Kyferia will continue to uh, to wait. Nice turn. Back on the other map. You will move up. And zombie is confused. Zealer doing anything? Um, yeah, I would just... How deep is this? Can I just walk? It's about a 10 foot drop. Oh, okay. So in that case, I'll move around here. Okay, that your turn. Um, yep. Cool. Zombie is confused. And then finally, Arlo makes on to the next map. At this point, the zombies are confused and far enough away that they probably can't give chase. So the danger... Oh, I didn't mean to move you back to this map. <laughs> um, so the danger is subsided, so I'm going to end combat in just a moment, but Arlo, take your turn, and then we'll end combat. You have full movement, basically, because you're right up at the edge of the map. All right. right um... Can I roll a perception? Sure. And see how structurally sound this looks. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, perception or survival, you can choose. Um, I'll go perception. Ish. Um... You are not confident that they are sturdy. Okay. But you don't know for a fact that they're not. It's just, you know. I'll, fact, I'll just... The fact that you question that is, is you know, you're questioning that, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll just say then. Be mindful. I don't like the look of that... Uh, that ruin. Be careful for cave-ins. Well, as a counterpoint, now you're out of combat, so I will end combat. If we've awoken some of the dead, it's likely we've awoken more. This area may not be safe while they are grooming. We could either keep moving, or we could take shelter here and wait for it all to blow. It's not exactly like the dead rest. They don't do well in the cold. They will eventually stop roaming. Might be within a few hours, might be within a few days. They'll return to the state they were in. As long as we don't disturb them again, they shouldn't be 
revitalized by the hunger. Another question to ask. How are we doing for supplies? How are people doing for supplies? I'm still good. Uh, what does that mean? How much I'm you got? What I, what I've taken in, in numbers, in... I have eight rations. I think everyone's anyway. on eight rations at this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got none. You should have some oh. in your backpack, bud. Ah, oh, yeah, the backpack. Yeah, let me have a look. And forgets he's wearing it on his back. <laughs> uh, to be fair to him, it's very hard for him to get the backpack off because of how wide his shoulders are. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how the hell do I open the backpack? The pencil uh, symbol to edit it, and it will open it. Um, okay, okay. I mean, I guess we can just have a short rest then, maybe. Can't have a short rest while on it. Well, you can have a short rest on a journey if you find somewhere safe to to uh, rest, basically. Oh, no, sorry. You can take a short rest any time on a journey, but you can only take one short rest per journey. That's how it works. You could take a short rest, but I also wouldn't mind just long resting it. Long rest you can only do if you find somewhere safe to do it while journeying. Is it considered somewhere safe? You'd have to venture in to find it out. <laughs> Outside right now, no. Inside, maybe. Well, if you find a place to set up camp, basically, that is considered safe. So, the only way to find a safe place to a long rest with the Uncharted Journeys rulebook is to roll it on the table. So, you've rolled for oh, an right. encounter. This is the encounter currently going on. Right. The right. zombie pit technically wasn't in the text. I added that as the intro to it, mm -hmm. essentially, yeah. and to make a, a, add a combat, that would be fun. Um, but if the thing you rolled on that table happens to be a safe place to take a long rest and great, otherwise short rest only. Right. Um. Yeah, I'm done. Just continue. Everyone else is. You can also take a short rest. I don't mind. I'm also down to continue. I'm okay to press on. Which route shall we take, then? The one away from the dead, says Kyferia. That I don't agree with. I can't say for sure we actually know which way that is. Can I do any blood hunter tracking undead shenanigans? I don't know, can you? <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> I I have um Mister didn't know that zombies existed till now. <laughs> um uh, shit, what is it again? Uh I have advantage on survival checks to track fey fiends or undead. So to track them, yeah, you could use that to like track where they're going. You can't really do it to like. I know. I guess you could use it to try and like work out a safe way for it. Yeah, could I try and do that? Sure. So to track would be survival. Yep. Uh, with advantage. If you want to keep pressing on while they're roaming around you, you're going to have to head north, east, or south. You can't go west. Now, you could eventually go north or south and then west, but you'd have to go a decent distance north or south first. If you just go west, even if you go like south for like 10 minutes, you're still going to be in the area they're going to get, basically. Okay. I say we go southeast. <laughs> Yeah. I am more than happy with just going southeast. Okay. You navigate obviously around the ruin that you had found and uh you press on. Um cool.
You travel for like another half day southeast just to play it safe. Um, while you're on the mountain, oh, ooh. Ooh. Burp, burp, burp. while you're on the mountain pass, uh, Zila, obviously you're a little bit tired, not injured though. Would you be scouting ahead or would you be with the group at this point? Zila. Who would be, sorry? Z Zila. Yeah, yeah, well, what was the question? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> would, really would you be scouted ahead at, at this point or would you be with the rest of the group? Uh, wait, I'm the sentry. Wouldn't I be. Oh, sorry. My, my mistake. Uh, yeah. The ruined. Would you be scouting ahead or would you be. I think it. Uh, yeah, I'll scout ahead. Cool. Then you come across this before anyone else. So, uh, you are the sole person who gets to roll it on this. Um, give me a perception check. Okay, give me fuck me. Nice. Not bad. That is very nice. As you're wandering through the kind of mountain area, you, you notice just embedded into the rock on this kind of like cliff path so it's like a fairly thin uh path like maybe enough for like two and a half people to walk abreast that sort of like width of path and it's just kind of a sheer drop um afterwards uh so rock face on one side sheer drop on the other so you're walking along you round a corner and you notice something carved into the rock it appears to be some sort of shrine a kind of carved out statuettes so you know only about this size or just in a little kind of hole that's been gro uh, grooved out of the mountain uh roll me a religion check hmm. you have no idea who these figures in this shrine are but there are three of them what faith they're from they don't appear to be from the the um, pantheon that you're familiar with at the very least um or if they are they're like vastly different uh depictions of these deities than what you're used to but nonetheless amongst these statuettes have been left a series of offerings most of them have been broken apart and turned into tatters by the the weather you know, the frigid ice, the snow, the wind, the rain. You know, there probably were scraps of parchment where prayers were once written upon, but all that's left is, like, the tiniest threads of them. But something remains. They're old and dusty, but a series of glass bottles filled with a red liquid sit on the shelf below these statuettes. Would you like to take them? Yes. Congratulations, you solved my shrine puzzle. <laughs> uh, you have found seven potions of healing. Oh, seven. fucking sick, Ooh. bro. Jesus, he's gonna open his own store. What the fuck? See, my loot goblin ways went over. I was thinking, I was thinking, you know, like, oh, my, my character's a good guy. I don't know if he, you know, take offerings. Also, stealing but, from a shrine might be like, oh no, I made God angry, kind of thing. Yeah, but at the same time, loot. Mm -hmm. and yeah, that was what versions. that was what you rolled. So that gives you a, a, a sense of a flavor of what hidden reserves might be. You rolled a fringe shrine. I mean, hey, it's a song of the damned. Like, it's gonna happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Whether it's now from stealing health potions from a shrine or later on. And you may even say, I'm already damned. <laughs> yeah. Uh, obviously, you, they're all in your inventory at the moment. If you want to spread them out amongst the group, that's fine. If you want to keep them to yourself uh, as like, potentially the, the um, a roaming medic, that's also fine. They, they, you found them, so it's up to you what you do with them. Uh, how many are in our group at the moment? Six. Six. Uh, I'll give one to everyone... Uh, and I'll give the extra one to Aegis. Okay, cool. Hell yeah. Cool. Thanks, man. Uh, I will move those into everyone's inventory. Obviously, if you Fit. are injured currently and you want to use one, uh, that's a way to heal without having to take a short rest. But to be fair, you're nearly at the end of your journey anyways. So... 
Oh, I'll drink all seven. Oh, you only got one, <laughs> so. Um... I'll take them. Oh no, he's gonna brag to us for our potions. <laughs> <laughs> Give them to me. <laughs> Potion seller? Potion seller? <laughs> I require your strongest potions, for I'm about to go into battle. <laughs> You're not strong enough for my strongest potions, traveller. Why would you say this, potion seller? I am I am a knight on a quest, and I require your strongest potions. The main thing I remember that from that one is when he when he really puts his heart and soul into it. He's like, <laughs> yeah, please, yeah, yeah. potion seller, I'm going into going battle. To you are not worthy of my strongest potions. <laughs> Go and find some other person who will sell you potions. Like, <laughs> I'm opening that video. I have to watch that after. It's oh so God. fucking good. Potion seller. I feel like Tommy and Alex potentially games. don't know what we're talking about. No, I know no, what you're talking about. <laughs> I was really you worried no for a second there that you were uncultured. No. <laughs> cool. Sammy, you have to put that shit in main chat so Tommy can watch it. <laughs> Wait, Tommy, you don't know what we're talking about? No. Oh my fucking god. Such a fucking good video. Alone, it's it's like, good. you know when you find a video that's like, this is why YouTube was created all those years ago? Yes. Yeah. It's one of those. It's also I... 12 years old. Yeah. God damn. Like Which, to be fair, that's that's not early YouTube at that point, but still. No, 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 it is. But, like, this is definitely, like, 12 it's... years ago YouTube level. Like, this, this is what was around back then. Yeah. Anyways, um, you then can spend the rest of your journey traveling on some path. So another day passes. So a ration extra from everyone, basically. Your journey took a little bit longer because the zombies. But, uh, yeah. Where, where about Kytheria? What do you mean? Like, in the group or health-wise or what? Just in the group. Uh, she probably normally sticks towards the back. Yeah. Well, I can have an, uh, my eyes on her. Yeah. I'd like to talk to her. Okay. You talk to uh, yeah. You approach Kytheria. Thanks for helping with the zombies back there. <coughs> Why wouldn't I? As you said to me in the tent, with uh, self-preservation and all, I just expected you to turn to help straight away. Well, that's what you did at the end, Mom. When everyone said we're running, she did, yes. No, no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm saying this in character. Okay. Then I will shut up. <laughs> How do you Wait, respond? Do I actually hear this? Never mind. Do I no, hear you're this? near the back, because you said you'd be near the back, and yeah, you could absolutely yeah, I mean, hear but this. I could still be, like, too far away. If, if... if you want to be within earshot, then I have no problem with you being within earshot. I guess it depends on how Callum would want it. But you want some privacy to talk to her. No, I was just, I was just talking about you. Okay, yeah, then, then I'll make that comment. I mean, she, she helped me get out of the situation I was in. Hmm. Well, we got lucky that the two brain dead ones with sharper weapons than mines decided to stay with Put and fight them, and they didn't die. Yeah, well, we had a little bit more on our head, and I'll give her a passive aggressive smile. You know, a smart fighter doesn't get into fights because they can't win. You won by pure luck. Oh, that's so. I also. I wouldn't. I wouldn't, uh. You know, we're all new with how each other fights and everything, so it's not like we know, know each other's strengths or weaknesses, so we're not very, uh, not very well-oiled, if you get what I mean, so. But, uh, I mean, hopefully the, the more we fight together, the better we'll, we'll do. Can I um, roll perception just to see whether I hear this conversation? I'm not necessarily going to weigh in. Sure. Oh no. I'm going to get the displeasing dad eyes. <laughs> you absolutely hear this conversation. Yes. 
you're in full leader mode as well, so like your your ears prick up as soon as you notice three people not super getting on near the back, and you go, "Yeah, what what do you do with that information is up to you." Though. I'm gonna keep note of that. The way I see it is that at the moment we're all stuck together, so there's no point in me running off on my own, particularly in a place like this. She says with a kind of like. Look how wonderful our surroundings are, mocking sort of gesture. Mm. Oh. I know I'm looking to have everyone around here. Now. What did you say, sorry, Samai? said, yeah, I'm sure we're of great use to you for now. In a, again, passive aggressive. Do you have an issue with me, Elf? I don't know at all, <laughs> Tiefling. Good. You're right. You are of use to me. The brain dead ones are normally the ones to get eaten by zombies first. And at that point, she speeds up her walk. I'll, I'll give her a little. I'll just smile at that. Not in a, like, friendly way, though. Mm -mm. I'll look down at the floor. I'm just trying friendly. to do is give a compliment. <laughs> just, just, just keep walking. I'd like to talk to Arlia. Okay. Alright. Uh, I'll just kind of be walking alongside, you know, just kind of like shaking side to side almost. Shambling like a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> so, Arlia. I couldn't help but over here back in the encampment couple of ladies were talking, saying that apparently your infernal touch works magic on hair. What does that mean? Dai kind of turns around, pauses, and she goes, I would like to know that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh... You give a few haircuts. If you must know, I chopped a few. Well, I shaved a few heads back in slavery. And by that I mean I took a crude knife. Not quite scalping, but I'm not very skilled. You can take a chance if you like. No, no, I think I'm okay. I was just curious, because it was... Well, I didn't quite understand what they meant by your infernal touch and working magic. But I guess it was just... Uh... I, I, I guess it was just a uh, turn of phrase that I'm not familiar with. I suppose they were just happy with my work. Or with the man himself. Hoo-hoo! Well, perhaps I can give you a nice mohawk sometime. Who, me or the ruined? Whoever's taking. Well, as you can see, the last person who took the knife to my hair was not particularly skilled. As a reminder, he's got a mohawk. <laughs> and probably, maybe, not intentional. <laughs> <laughs> I think it suits you. I think it looks pretty good. It's better than anything I could do. Well... You're probably the experts on how cats look, so not really a thing I tend to have to deal with. I'm starting to uh, have to deal with it less and less, and I'll just grab my hair and pull a clump out. <laughs> Do I hear this conversation? I don't want to borrow it. I, don't, I, just um, to, like... I would say no, because you were at the back, and they're probably closer to the front. So, in... Our lion did hear our 
Uh, that's, mm -hmm. I suppose that is true. Yes. Uh, you go ahead, roll perception check then. Cool. I just want to know if I see the room close to clump a hair out of his head. Ooh, you hear man. everything. <laughs> You, you hear the hairs wanna... being ripped from a man's scalp. You hear the <laughs> squelching of little pools of blood fill where the follicles once were. And you hear the conversations that we yet to have. <laughs> I can see the future. <laughs> I'm like, don't say it. Don't do it. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll just like look at the clump of hair and be like, Whoops! Pulled out a bit more than I expected. <laughs> well, maybe I'm better at haircuts than I thought. I could definitely go for a mohawk. I think it would suit me. Less to pull out. Oh, yes. Maybe it'll stay in a little bit uh, longer at that point then. Don't Those things to get caught on. <laughs> well, you know where to find me. I shall keep that in mind. Barbershop unlocked. Thanks, <laughs> 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 Ed. Take a look at my room as well. I, I'd like to talk to. Um, I always forget her name. I'm very bad with NPC what? names. No. Guy NPC. Fieri. Uh, oh. Guy Fieri. <laughs> Guy Fieri. Again, it really <laughs> there, yeah, yeah. I'll try and be subtle about it. I'll, um, I'll be walking ahead and I'll um, stare at her and. Not a river. Yes. What's your game here? What do you mean? Do you plan on insulting our compatriots the entire way? She insulted me first. So be the bigger person. Anyone should know that it makes you brain dead to have your teammates turn their back on you. She gives a sort of grimace of a smile, and then, uh... I'm not sure that I want to be a companion of someone like her, let's just put it that way. I'm going to stop walking, and I'll um, put my hand on her shoulder, which, when I think about it, is probably quite terrifying. Um... <laughs> Push us into a <laughs> it just droops over her whole shoulder, just grab the whole thing. Yeah, I get on the knee. <laughs> um... You are young, but you are a promising warrior. Just don't forget that you are part of a bigger thing here. And they know that. I have to believe they do anyway. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm fine with playing. Diligent. Confidant. And willing to have the backs of any of our companions. Even the weird... Freak, she says, looking over at uh, the ruined. Or the blind man who claims to be from another time. But the things I heard about her, she doesn't sound any better than the people we're running from. Do I know what things in particular she might be talking about? Well, what rumors do you know about, uh, Zeebo? I was about to open my uh, rumor journal. Oh. Let me let me just quickly consult my brain. <laughs> uh, 
from what I know of Zealer, it's pretty pretty harsh <laughs> to uh <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, you got the worst one. <laughs> the villain energy. Oof. Oh, that's Oof. <laughs> Have you spoke to her about these rumors? Why would I? She gives off the air of not liking to speak to people. Communication is key. At the end of the day, it is just that. A rumor. The ruined back there. He seemed to be under the pressure that I was some kind of skilled hairdresser. Uh, I don't think that's what those women were saying. <clears throat> I'm not sure how to respond to this. Let's just put it this way. Um, some people get lonely while in captivity, and while you're not really my thing, you are incredibly muscular and tall. And when your muscles are big, when your stature's big... I'm going good. to stop you right there. <laughs> how did we get onto this? I'm just saying that uh, I think he's misinterpreted what they were saying because I heard the same things. <laughs> Praise be to Dawn, I hope not. Anyway. Fight the enemy, not our teammates. If you must, talk to Zela. I will hold your hand if I must, not literally. So thank you for pointing out my big muscles. You're not even curious what I heard about her? What did you hear? She, uh... She went on a killing spree at one point. And, and if you're not people, killed? When she killed people, she didn't spare her. Does that happen in character? No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she didn't spare anyone, including the children. Then we will talk to her. That's what you wish. I'm happy just to ignore it. As I said to her, use her until we're done with this. As long as you play nice. Oh, I'll treat her with exactly the same amount of respect she gives me. Just don't let me hear you throwing insults again, okay? Yes, sir. Are you still? Do you still have your hand on her shoulder, by the way? No. Then at this point, she turns around and walks off. Oh, the youth. I'm assuming they, like, dropped behind the group, right? Yeah, probably. Would Zila have, like moved up more towards the front. I think if you want that and Sammy's okay with that, that's fine. I'd probably be still the furthest back, but I don't think we would be like super far apart. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think we'd be pretty good. I mean, okay. it's, it's kind of like when you're walking in a group, you know, if you want to talk to someone, it's fairly easy just to slow your pace until they yeah. catch yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll do that and fall in line with Zila. Say Zila. Those, uh, those weapons you have, they're pretty interesting. I don't think I've ever seen any quite like them. I'll, I'll grab one from my back and I'll just kind of show them, I guess. 
Yeah, they are... Uh, well, special. And I'll... I'll, I'll put it back. Yes, I saw that they, uh, they returned to you. That is, uh... Intriguing. Yeah, well, that is by design. I... I used to be able to do a lot more, but I... I've lost... I've, I've lost certain things with time. Uh, yes. I understand that. I was quite the warrior before uh, my enslavement. Those deeds are long gone. Not from what I saw. Hmm. I still have some skill, I suppose. Nowhere near as much as I had before. But who knows? With this newfound strength, perhaps I could regain those skills and learn new ones, expand my horizons. Just, just be careful. I, I, I know a thing or two about borrowed power. It's just. Enjoy it as, as, yeah, just, just be careful. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm taking full advantage of this power, but... It's... <clears throat> Malevolence has not escaped me. That's good. Make sure you always keep that in mind. I will, and... Thank you for, uh, for saying that. I appreciate you looking out. I'll, I'll kind of look in the distance, realizing that I, I, I've been the least vocal so far. And as he like kind of turns around, I'll, I'll grab his shoulder to like kind of pull him back. Um, there's oh? one more thing, though. Sure. I'll, I'll kind of recall to the person who told me in camp. Um, I, I heard this one thing about you, and I'm, so, from, from what I, I, from what I can gather, this doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but, and I'll, I'll take a deep breath. So I heard that you betrayed your people, and killed everyone. I'll, I'll just say that and wait for his reaction before I continue, or say, or do anything else. What? Yeah, well... I've been told that the... Well... Azamorians were... Heroes. And that they had to step in to stop you, and... Free your village. I just wanted to make sure that... That is not correct. He's just gonna sort of look at the floor and start, like, just scraping away at his arm. Lies. All lies. Those filthy dogs. No, none of that is true. My village, my town, it was taken, but not by me. It was the Empire's doing. I, I failed that day. And my people, they suffered for it. Well... You seem to have a lot more in common than I first thought. Yeah, well, and I'll, I'll kind of brush everything else off. Um, yeah, well, I just wanted to make sure. I figured that that wasn't the case. I just wanted to let you know that 
this rumor flies around in camp. As uh, as Ruin looks up at you, finally after saying all that, you like kind of notice that there's more like blood on his face than there usually is. And I'll squint my eyes at that, but I won't say anything. Well. If we have a lot in common, then... Perhaps it's best that we stick together. Agreed. I say with a light chuckle. I will dispel those rumors. I will reclaim my name. I'm sure you will. And I'm just going to start walking on. Okay. Yeah. Aegis. Die falls in, in step with you. Oh. I don't sense that you're like the others. How so? They are not as thinking as you. Doesn't mean they're not intelligent, but combat is not your inclination. Am I correct? Well, I mean, I, I was taught how to use a sword. To, never had to in combat. There are a great many different things that people can do. Not all of them have to be violent. Pursue what you find. What you find helps you. What you find uh, fulfills you. Don't be swayed by the others. They pursue violent lifestyles. It doesn't mean you do too. Uh, no, I thank you. But I'll, I'll try and make sure that, that I don't leave any of them behind. And if that means that I have to put my hands dirty, then I guess that's something I'll have to face. Once you find your way out of these mountains, what's your group's plan exactly? I mean, we need some way to let them, the main group that are still back in the mountains, know that we've been, we got out. I guess. And then, once all of the refugees have escaped, what then? I'm not sure. He looks off kind of vacantly towards the horizon, and you get the sense that there's a deep melancholy that comes over him. I don't know why I was brought here. But I was brought here. The things I was involved in before, they were... Matters of the fate of this realm. Therefore, I can only... Conclude that I was brought here. Then, the same is true. Don't lose yourself, but prepare for battle. There's a storm on the horizon. There isn't actually, though, like physically. I was gonna say, like, that, <laughs> that moment he says, prepare yourself, there's a battle, like, I'm starting to panic. <laughs> oh, fan. Better? 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is a fan in general. Thank you. Sure this is a fan year round. Okay, <laughs> never mind. What is did howling? You, yeah, exactly. Did you say thank you in character terms? Yes. Then uh, he will just nod his head. <laughs> Whatever weather comes, it seems at least for the foreseeable future. I'm here weathering it with you. Come. It seems we're nearly out of the mountains. And so you all continue on your journey, unless anyone wants to do anything else. No? Then I think that's a good place to wrap it up. Pretty oh. punctual. Um, so, uh, you have all made it then at the end of that day. Uh, so there's going to be one extra day passed. You've all made it to this kind of road in northern Elysia. Um, the snow from the mountains completely fades away into more kind of uh, rolling grassy uh, hills. You know, kind of like the if you've seen like Switzerland or whatever, like, you know, the bottom of mountains where it's quite verdant, rolling hills instead, but you can still see the mountains off in the distance. Um, and only a few miles away is the coast. Um, it's still cold. It's, you know, we're late autumn and you've all been traveling in the mountains for a while. It's probably fair to say that some of you probably have a cold, as in the illness. But you know you're near to the ocean because you can taste the ocean in your snot. And you, uh, you keep on walking. Um, where would you think that you're going to go next in terms of, you know, you have found your way out of the mountain, so are you going to return? Are you going to keep on venturing to try and, like, find a place for the the rest of the uh, uh, refugees to kind of travel to? Or, yeah, yeah what? I think that's a like place where we could, like, stock up on supplies, know that we could, like, send people to. So, a, so an actual settlement, essentially. I, that's what I would at least go for. Yeah. The rest is okay with that. Yeah, I'd say so. I'll say you, boss man. What is that? Sorry. Um. Do you, so you found your way out of the mountains now. So we're, we're discussing mm -hmm. whether you want to then head back to the refugees to like lead them out, because that's what you were sent to do, or do you want to find somewhere for them to actually go to once they're out of the mountains before heading back to them? So Samo and uh, Alex have said, yeah, probably we should try and find something. Yeah, we need to finish the job fully. Okay. Um, so looking at the map, yeah. where, where are you heading next then? Probably to just follow the road until we come across the yeah. settlement. Follow the okay, well, you're going to get to a crossroads eventually, so which way would you go to the crossroads? I mean, if you read all the map, probably right. I'm curious what this is. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm thinking left. If the mines are active, can we not ask for directions? Oh, you, you could head to the mines and see whether there's something there, yeah? And then take it from there. Basically, I'm just trying to work out what we're doing next next session, essentially. So. I would have said maybe the best bet would be to go to the mines and then find out from them where, the, where their settlement is or whether their settlement to them is. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Maybe sure. you guys just want to follow the road, but it's up to you. I mean, that's like half a day I mean, away. It's so on that's, the way. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Cool. All right, then you're going to do that next session. I'll yeah. prepare appropriately. Um, XP. So for Uncharted Journeys, you do get XP for completing journeys as well. I have designed a system to stop you from, not that I think you would abuse it, but to stop you from be, doing like micro journeys so that you get more XP for smaller journeys. So um, yeah, you will get XP for journeys, but if you do short journeys, you get less XP basically. Um, so... Um, that combined with the fight with the zombies divided by your party equals you all gaining 375 XP. Ooh, that's is a level, level up, baby. Level up, baby. Uh, that was 300 and what, sorry? 375. That's 450. Tommy, it doesn't look like you gave yourself XP last turn. Um, We're so, 450 and all. Thing, so you should be on 450. Uh, okay. Yes. I... I would also like to nominate Samo for an inspiration for his role. 
I think we all role played there. I am happy to give everyone, everyone XP. Yeah. I think everyone did a really good job with that. So yeah, I feel um, like that makes sense. Cool. Yeah, everyone take a uh, point of inspiration as well. Um, and yeah, good session, guys. Yeah. yeah. Good sesh. Very like. Yeah, I think uh, I personally really enjoyed the Uncharted Journey thing. I'm, I'm curious to hear what you guys thought. But... Yeah. Yeah, yeah like that. Awesome. Just just took a little longer this time because we had to like do it for the first time. I feel like do it for the first time and, and learn faster. it. What have yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Um, I mean, I mean, honestly, I had to read it like the hour before the session because I hadn't. I'd read through the entire book before, and then I was like. Yeah knew i was going to use it and then the hour before the session was like i need to refresh myself on how it works and then how i'm going to explain it so yeah. uh but yeah i agree i think it will be uh, in time it will become pretty quick I, i've said before as well not every journey will require it it's like if you're like traveling between two settlements that you know we might really simplify it because you know you know the route there and what have you whereas if you're going into like lands you've never been to before it would make sense to do it sort of thing uh, yeah. or if you're going for like a really big journey um but yeah cool okay well thank you everyone for watching anyone have anything that they want to kind of ask or discuss before we close out or i think so it's pretty good oh, nope so. we should hopefully have music working for stream next time i'm going to fix that after we stop streaming um but it will be in the vod as i said on youtube um but yeah thank you everyone for watching hope you have a wonderful week one last thing i will say before we end uh which i think i was meant to say to you boys before we started and i forgot which is that i can't do next week because i am in scotland from wednesday through to friday Ooh. Uh -oh. sorry work again oh, that, that sucker bubble but hey i'm going to scotland so maybe i'll get some like cool inspiration for like the the terrain and what have you <laughs> um true yeah scotland uh, uh i mean and some Scottish NPCs, please. Potentially, if you guys wanted to try for Monday, I could potentially have something cooked for Monday. Um, I could also try... I mean, I don't know how early this would be, but I'm also free the weekend. This weekend. If I, I could get option. it ready by the weekend, I, I could potentially do Sunday as well. No, I probably can't do Sunday. Sorry. I probably can't do weekends. Actually, no, um, I probably could do Sunday, because Mo's campaign normally starts super late for me. So I could do Sunday, but Tommy can't do Sunday. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, Monday also works fine. Monday I'll actually aim. works really good for me. I, I will let you know how I'm doing in terms of prepping for Monday. So if we can yeah. do Monday, great. If everyone's available. Cool. Alex and Callum, are you looking okay for Monday? Cool. Tommy, I don't, um, no, I don't remember whether you actually said yes or no to Monday. Yeah, I could probably do Monday. Okay. Yeah, I should be able to do Monday. We'll aim for Monday, but we'll, I'll post if we're not doing it. And uh, I'll let you all yeah. know if, we're, if, we, if we are doing it. Um, mm. Otherwise, though, I'd say next week. Uh, so the week after next week, I should be good. It's oh, actually, no. I think that's on a Thursday that I'm going to Cardiff. I think I'm good. Oh, but then that might mean that I'm traveling. Oh, whatever. I might not do the week after. <laughs> God, work. We'll figure out days. <laughs> I'll, I'll look at my work calendar. I'm definitely traveling to Cardiff in early February on a Thursday, which might mean that I'm staying overnight on the Wednesday. But we can move stuff around again. Yeah, Sorry yeah. about this. Um, this work open. has got me traveling more at the moment, but should die down after that Cardiff visit. So I think, unless things change again. Um, but either way, I try as much as possible to avoid them being on Wednesdays, and then it never goes according to plan. But, anyways, cool. Once again, thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Goodbye. Bye.